loved. You are valued. You are resilient. <laughs> you got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides at aarp.org slash caregiving. It's six o'clock. Let Ellen's do the cooking tonight. Order on ellens.com. Good morning, Dallas, Fort Worth. I'm Lissa Hernandez, and this is your Spectrum News in 90. Fort Worth could add over 70 new firefighters to its department after report says the proposal outlines two recruitment classes, one in September and the other one in February. Lanes in Plano's U.S. Highway 75 are back open after a fury crash yesterday involving a tractor trailer. Two people were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. And a dead person has been found caught in the Rio Grande buoys. That's according to the Dallas Morning News. Mexican officials say DPS alerted them of the body. Now the death, the cause of death and nationality of the person has not yet been released. DPS has not responded to the report. Now it's time for a look at your forecast and your weather on the ones. Well, the heat isn't going anywhere. It is the hottest part of the year, for goodness sake. 106 today, 106 on Friday, and even hotter as we head into the weekend with more heat expected by the second half of the weekend into early next week. An excessive heat warning issued for us here in the Dallas, plus the concern for again fire danger. Details coming up. At the Texas-Mexico border, a body has been found stuck in Texas's floating buoy barriers. Mexican officials say Texas DPS alerted them to the body. The cause of death and nationality of the person have not been released, and DPS has not responded to the report. Governor Greg Abbott ordered those buoys to be installed last month to try to stop illegal migrant crossings. But federal officials from both the U.S. and Mexico say they pose a significant safety concern. The DOJ is suing Texas to take them out of the river. Governor Abbott is not backing down on his latest border efforts, though. He made this comment yesterday when asked about that DOJ lawsuit. Take a look. I thought... President Biden, thank you note uh, for what Texas is doing to secure the border. It may be a, a big check uh, for all the money the state of Texas is, is investing to do the federal government's job. I believe that the constitutional right of the state of Texas to secure our border and to defend our sovereignty supersedes uh, any statute. In Eagle Pass, a city park has been off limits to its residents while state troopers installed those buoys and arrested migrants in the area. Yeah, but as our John Salazar shows us, not everyone is happy with the takeover by Operation Lone Star. The Battle of Shelby Park in Eagle Pass is now won, and locals are celebrating to get this green space back from the jurisdiction of DPS. They're celebrating after the city council voted on Tuesday night to rescind an agreement between the city of Eagle Pass and DPS, which gave them unprecedented of this green space. During breakfast, the morning after the Eagle Pass City Council, all those in favor? Unanimously voted to take back Shelby Park. Talks continue to undo what Operation Lone Star has done. The Eagle Pass Border Coalition is going to file some Freedom of Information Act requests, and we're going to find out who authorized the concertina wire, who authorized the canisters. These canisters, the wire, is what America Garcia Graywall with the Eagle Pass Border Coalition is tackling next. This is just the first step. The way we're being represented in our own community by outsiders. After the Tuesday night showdown, she and other activists are now focused on all that remains of Governor Greg Abbott's $10 billion border security investment. How can we do this better? How can we be more effective? Because this is just the first step and, you know, things have to change. 
former Maverick County Commissioner, uh, more direct about what he wants. You want those containers gone? Uh, gone, gone. I mean, it, it, there's no, there's no reason to have them. I mean, can you remember? It's just a show. After Tuesday night's meeting, Mayor Rolando Salinas addressed why he unilaterally signed over the park to DPS. I made that decision because at that time, it was a situation I thought was uh, for the safety of the community. There's Salinas went on to say that his signature on this affidavit was intended to arrest migrants caught on park property, adding state troopers went rogue with the wire, canisters, and buoys, while at the same time, blocking public access to their park. DPS, ultimately, I think they're going to do what they want to do. So one thing is for us rescinding, and then we'll see what DPS does. So proud to be here with the rest of my community. With the bottom line for the Eagle Pass natives is this. Operation Lone Star must change the way they currently operate. Decent and humane to, to, uh, to uh, discuss what, what they're going to do to for the, all the people that are coming in. We can have border security without the cruelty, and that's what I want here in my hometown of Eagle Pass. Illegal border crossings are on the rise once again. For the month of July, border agents arrested more than 130,000 people. That is a 30% increase from June. But the Texas Tribune reports the spike in migrant crossings was mostly seen in southern Arizona, where about 40,000 arrests were made. This triple digit heat is putting a strain on our power grid, but so far it's stood up to the test. Here's a look at today's supply and demand forecast. You can see peak demand will come around 4 p.m. and it looks like conditions will be tight, but we will have enough energy to keep the AC running. And right now, several air critical wildfire risk in Bastrop County. Fire crews are fighting their second wildfire of the week. The Mesquite Field Fire is now burning about 40 acres and is 80% contained. It's located 30 miles south of the Powder Keg Pine Fire, which is more than 100 acres now and 75% contained. And further east near Houston, at least two firefighters are recovering after being burned by the Snow Hill Fire in San Jacinto County. They had to be taken to the hospital. Let's go ahead and bring in our chief meteorologist, Ricky Cody. R Ricky, good morning to you. So these red flag warnings for many parts of Texas today, can you explain what that means for Texas? Yeah, so we had red flag warnings in place yesterday. They were allowed to expire yesterday at 9 p.m. They were reissued again today for basically the same areas as of yesterday. You can see them highlighted here in the red. So basically from the Red River all the way down to Bear County. So basically what we're looking at when red flag warnings are issued, we have critical fire danger, as you alluded to just moments ago. It is also in effect until until nine o'clock an area that is favorable for not just fires to develop, but for them to spread rather quickly. Part of the reason we've got gusty winds out of the south between 10 and 20 plus miles an hour. Plenty of dry air in place for the most part, lower humidity. Not so much the case east of 35, which is why we don't have red flag warnings posted for places like Houston. But again, it could be worse. But right here in red, that's the areas. Uh, those are the areas rather that we expect uh, fires to, uh, to, to develop. And if they do, they'll spread quickly. I want to remind you of the 254 counties in Texas, all but 90, all but 90 are currently dealing with burn bans, which means it's not advised, it's legal actually to burn anything outdoors. So uh, just be mindful of that. It's most of the states and especially in those areas where the red flag warning has been issued for today. Now, what we need is rain. And unfortunately, over the course of the next seven days, I don't have it. Maybe a weak front that continue to soar. In fact, I've got even more heat to talk about in your seven day forecasts. And I'll show it to you coming up after the break. Stay with us. Stay connected to Spectrum News One with the Spectrum News app. Stream your trusted team live on the go or from home. And stay updated on the local news and weather forecasts that matter to you. Spectrum News, your community connection. Weather can be beautiful and at times powerful. Our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so you can better plan your day. And we do it every 10 minutes. Weather on the ones on Spectrum News One. At Spectrum, we know how much you depend on the reliability of our products and services. 
Now we've taken a new step forward in reliability by identifying before they become a problem. If you're affected, we'll contact you and help schedule a free service appointment with one of our expert technicians. The proactive maintenance of our network is one of the many reasons Spectrum delivers the most reliable internet speeds in the nation. Spectrum, keeping you connected. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Texas holds a very special place in both my heart and my family's heart as well. My dad started in the news business in 1955, so my dad was my idol. He was my mentor. I at world. I knew I just had to be a part of it. My life's purpose has been about informing, educating, and most importantly, connecting with people. It has been my passion to help people and make a difference in people's lives. I'm Brett Ship, anchor Spectrum News One. Hey there, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ricky Cody. Great that you're great that you're here with us here on Spectrum News One. We, of course, are still talking about the heat and excessive heat warning once again in effect for all of the Dallas Fort Worth area outside of that heat advisories. That is because we are not looking at any any relief over the course of the next to injury. We also have fire concerns. In fact, we have red flag warnings issued for Tarrant County, basically up and along the interstate and points out towards the west. This is due to the ongoing drought. We've got plenty of ground fuel, the lack of rain, all aiding in for wire wild aiding in wildfires to spread quickly, and we'll have to keep an eye on that yet again today. But we're not alone. Up and down I-35, even in parts of Oklahoma, is where we have the fire concern today. High pressure, that's the culprit, maintains control of our forecast. It's going to kind of meander across the state in the days to come. By the time we get into about Friday, it's going to be back towards the west, but we're still under, under its influence, meaning more triple-digit heat right through the upcoming weekend. That may bring us, by the time we get to the second half of the weekend and into early next week, it may be far enough to the west to bring in a cold front, but I think it's pretty much going to stall out. It looks like right now along the Red River. It's not going to bring us a drop in temperatures, but it could bring us a little bit of rain and that may may drop 106 today. Excessive heat warning in effect again, a mostly sunny day wall to wall sunshine really overnight tonight. A warm, a muggy one dropping down to 83. Here's your extended 7 day forecast. We'll go 106 on Friday. 107 on Saturday, 106 on Sunday, and then we may be able to bring a stray or spotty shower in with that front Monday and Tuesday, possibly into the upper 90s, but then back to 102 by Wednesday. Texas is cracking down on illegal street racing and street takeovers. Governor Greg Abbott signed two bills in the law yesterday in Fort Worth with Mayor Maddie Parker. Both laws will help prosecute reckless drivers and confiscate their cars and other items found. Fire crews say the Blum Fire in Hill County is now completely contained. It burned more than 300 acres after sparking last week as fire departments from across the state have been released, but local crews will stay on scene to keep an eye on hot spots. Texans living in Wise County are back in their homes after evacuation orders were lifted for the Boone's Creek fire last night. That fire is now 70% contained and spans an estimated 80 acres. And the Arlington Police Department has arrested and identified three teenagers suspected in a car vandalism spree. They say these three are believed to have vandalized 17 cars over the weekend with racist and vulgar graffiti. Well, economic alarm bells are sounding this morning after a prominent rating agency downgraded U.S. credit. This is the second downgrade in U.S. history. Fitch Ratings is also forecast. Airbnb is back in the spotlight again after reports of fewer bookings. Yeah, and now some owners are selling their properties and trying to stop the financial bleeding. 
Our Michael Lozano explains. Getting that guest ready for the next group. Allen resident Pita Castillo manages a couple of Airbnbs in South Padre. Towards the end of COVID, we saw um, a big interest in bookings and reservations. But of late, she says the bookings have slowed down. Changes also to our cancellation policy, making it a little bit more flexible for people to plan their trip. It's a decline Airbnb owners are seeing nationwide. The Airbnb crash is ravaging Airbnb owners around America. The Airbnb collapse is real and it's here. A recent string of social media posts are leaving many worried of an Airbnb collapse. Some are citing data from a rental analysis site known as All the Rooms. The report shows major U.S. cities are seeing a more than 30% drop in revenue 22 to 2023, with places like Austin and San Antonio dropping 46 and 43% respectively. Michelle, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. But longtime North Texas realtor Cliff Freeman says those numbers are wrong. Are they doing this to sensationalize and get more business on YouTube? Or is there really, you know, meat on the bone here? While there has been a drop in 2023, Freeman cites a more accurate source in air DNA data. Those numbers only reveal a 7% drop for Austin and 4% drop for San Antonio. I certainly wouldn't take the position that the sky is going to be falling. It's a decline, Freeman says, is in part thanks to the post-pandemic era, with many Texans looking to travel abroad. People now are spending the big bucks to go and take the big trips, which may not be in some of the secondary markets. And with the strong housing market, Freeman isn't worried about any sort of collapse. Hi, Michael. Welcome. It's a hopeful... That is something to worry about at this time. Especially for those who oversee Airbnbs, like Bitha. And down in Austin, Airbnb is looking to expand into apartments, which would allow renters to earn some extra cash. According to Axios, the company recently partnered with a number of complexes, allowing their renters to list units on the app. Airbnb says close to 3,000 units will be eligible to rent out, and renters could make over 1,300 bucks a month. Former President Donald Trump is scheduled to be back in court today for his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The judge in this case has also overseen several cases involving people who participated in the January 6th riot. And today, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton will also be in court on security fraud charges. Paxton is accused was paying him to promote its stock. And approval of the Supreme Court is still at a record low. That's according to a recent poll from Gallup. Right now, approval of the nation's highest court stands at just 40%. Right, we're going to have more Texas headlines and another check of your forecasts coming right up. Be sure to stay with us. Spectrum News 1 continues after this quick break. Good morning, DFW. It is now 618. The roads are pretty quiet for the most part. We do have the report of a crash, not creating too much of a headache, but something to look out for. This is over near Louisville on the westbound lanes right there on 121 and Hebron Parkway. Also, let's see what the roads are looking like. Here's a look over here in Mesquite. Looks like things are getting pretty busy and pretty quiet morning over, uh, over in South Lake. Sixteen teams, fifteen grand. One tournament to decide who knows the most about separating news fact from news fiction. One, two, three, seven. That is correct, Jacob. The Spectrum News Challenge Tournament. That sounds really awesome, man. <laughs> if you think you know the news, then it's time to take the challenge. Spectrum News Challenge Wednesday nights at eight thirty. Available on all your favorite devices. When you buy Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 a month, you get a second line for free. So get one line for yourself and a free line for your devoted friend. Friend? Friend. 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 Or you can get one line for yourself and one line for your kid. Sold. Or both lines for yourself. I use one for business and another for business. Get one line of unlimited for $29.99 and get a second line free for 12 months. Call, click, or visit a Spectrum store today. I don't remember how it started. Not today. Oh boy. 
our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. We have one mission, and that is to serve our community. We have reporters on the ground sharing what's happening within their communities. It's my responsibility to know the issues here in Texas, but also, more importantly, to know who it affects. We want to make sure that you know what's going on in politics and what your local news. You're going to get storytelling about your local community. Your evening on Spectrum News One, weeknights starting at 5 p.m. Central. The Texas A&M professor who was put on leave for allegedly criticizing the lieutenant governor says she never told students Dan Patrick believed kids who died of an overdose deserved it. She says her comment. And KDISD will now allow district trustees to ban books without a review committee. Moving forward, the district can ban a book as long as two board members agree on it. And Houston ISD is looking to opt out of union meetings to discuss employee work conditions. Next week, the school board will vote on whether or not to continue their monthly consultations. And right now, millions of Texans do not have access to reliable internet. Your JJ Maldonado shows us what the state is doing to bridge this d digital divide. Having uh, the technology and having access to the internet to make that even possible is really a crucial piece of our education system right now. Dr. McDonald is the director of digital learning at Bastrop ISD. Part of her department's vision for the district is making sure students have equitable access to technology. She joined county leaders and other organizations to discuss how unreliable access to the internet hinders Texans in rural county education, health care, and finding a job. One of the things that was of great discussion is the importance of um, having access um, and affordability were some of the concerns from our community members. According to U.S. Census Bureau data, nearly three million Texas households lack broadband access. Greg Conti is the director of the Broadband Development Office. His team is going across the state, surveying communities like Bastrop, asking them about affordability, access, and usage. The survey will help them plan as they fund grants in 2024 to expand broadband access in areas across the state. We're hearing all these different stories on why folks across the state cannot access uh, reliable broadband. And so as the funding comes into BDO, we're looking to implement those dollars on how best to address that digital divide from all those different inputs. Dr. McDonald says the pandemic has streamlined how school districts leverage technology and use the internet to support students. It was definitely enlightening to kind of think through what we have here. What are some things that we need to expand access and what benefits that would be for us and kind of think through some of those gaps. The broadband office will be making stops in the coming weeks across the state from central, east, west, and north Texas. Charter Communications is the parent company of Spectrum and Spectrum News. And rural Texas may lose out on billions in broadband infrastructure funding due to federal regulations. Texas was recently awarded over $3 billion to expand Internet access. But to get the money, applicants have to have a line of credit from a major bank and put up to 25% of the project cost, uh, put, put up 25% uh, of the project cost ahead of time, something many rural areas just can't do. Meanwhile, a North Texas Republican is calling on the governor to call another special session. Representative Brian Harrison wants the state to ban COVID vaccine mandates in the private business. has already banned COVID mandates issued by city and county officials. Well, it's official. Willie the rodeo goat is safe and sound thanks to these two awesome Willis County Cowboys who 
helps round up the escape goat that had been missing for more than a week. The rodeo says they're planning to award them with a prize. And of course, they get all kinds of prizes. And there's like almost over $5,000 worth of stuff put up for the, the capture and safe return of this goat. Well, the investment that the community put into finding yeah. Willie is incredible, but I stand by, Willie did not want to be found. This goat wanted to start a new life. He had goals, he had ambitions. He didn't want to be caught. All the times that they tried to catch up on him and you know, you saw a video of him just taking off and darting off way too fast. I don't know. I think everyone's happy, but I don't think Willie's happy. And that's the real, the real victim here, Charles. Your connection with animals is just outstanding. <laughs> you know, your imagination, the, the, the picture you paint for everybody when you do an animal story is like, I mean, I mean. Am I wrong? Willie wanted to get out. He's a goat. He He's had fine. big dreams. He just wanted to take a midnight train and start a Maybe new life run in the for city. Mayor. Willie for mayor. Willie for um, mayor. But it is interesting. They put up so much money in like every <laughs> different, you know, business in the, the town. The Facebook page was really funny. It was like if free you spa have a chance days to go back. and blah blah blah. It was great. So these two guys are going to be living at large. And you know, Willie, he ain't going anywhere now. He should get to cash in on all that. You know, he should get a spa day. He should get some restaurant gift cards. You're all about Willie. Justice for Willie. <laughs> free Willie. That's the no. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it out there. A I'm just going to leave it there. It's so, so <laughs> Avery, brilliant. this is what happens when you leave us a lot of time to talk about goats. I'm just going to let my imagination run wild. <laughs> Don't. I'm just going to let it hang here. I mean. <laughs> All right. We're going to have more tickets headlines. Than the I mean, right now. We've got serious. Thriving community is an informed community, and being able to play a role in bringing people the news is something that I take very seriously. There's just so many things to love about the state of Texas. Southern hospitality, great food. I love that there are so many different cultures celebrated. I want people to turn us on in the morning and feel like they've got the information they need to go out and conquer their day. I'm Alex Stockwell, anchor for Spectrum News One. Special Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. So I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. It's the best deal in mobile. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Special Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. Get one line for $29.99 and the second line is free. All with no taxes or hidden fees. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited 1-844-882-2999. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. We are connected, engaged from the moment we rise. We move, we adjust, we learn, explore, relax and grow together so we're ready to build a better tomorrow. Stay informed through exclusively for Spectrum customers. Exclusively for Spectrum customers.
Weather on the Ones, every 10 minutes. Also available on the Spectrum News app. Good morning, Dallas, Fort Worth. I'm Lisette Hernandez, and this is your Spectrum News in 90. The Houston Chronicle reports Texas DPS is continuing to separate families at the border. They say fathers are being detained on trespassing charges while their children and wives are transferred to Border Patrol agents. There were nearly 30 men arrested just last month. Denton has used over $1 million of federal funding to help the local homeless shelter, Our Daily Bread. The money will be used to support the 24-7 emergency shelter operations. We'll be in Dallas this weekend as they play, as FC Miami plays FC Dallas. We'll take a look at your forecast. Stick around. We'll be right back with a look at your forecast and your weather on the ones. An excessive heat warning once again in effect for the Dallas-Fort Worth area today. Please continue to practice your heat safety precautions. Do not become complacent. It is hot out there. At lunchtime, we're at 98. We're off to the races and back to about 105 to 106 as we get into the afternoon. On top of that, we have concerns for once again fire danger. I'll show you that in your seven day coming up in a minute. Today, El Paso is honoring the victims of the tragic El Paso Walmart shooting. Yeah, 23 people were killed in that shooting. Dozens more were injured, making it the deadliest attack on Hispanic people in U.S. history. Today, the city is honoring the big ceremony. There will also be a blood drive, altar creation, and community prayer events happening across the city. And it was just a few weeks ago that the El Paso, El Paso shooter was finally sentenced on federal hate crime charges. He is now serving 90 consecutive life sentences, but he still faces the death penalty when he goes to trial on state charges. That could start next year or in 2025. Today, former President Donald Trump is due back in court to answer to charges that he tried to overturn the 2020 election results. The former president faces four charges, including conspiracy to defraud the United States, something he is denying. But prosecutors say he was, quote, determined to remain in power and orchestrated a plot to overturn the election with six co-conspirators. After the indictment was handed down, many Republicans rushed to support the current GOP frontrunner. Texas Senator Ted Cruz posting on X, calling the new indictments a weaponization of our legal system. And Congressman Troy Nels says Trump is not responsible for what happened during the January 6th riots. He's also calling the Department of Justice corrupt, but Democrats say no one is above the law. Bustable thing you can do in a democracy is convince people that an election doesn't count, that their voice and their vote don't count. And today, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson will also be in court on security fraud charges. Paxson is accused of soliciting investors in a McKinney-based tech company back in 2011 without disclosing that the company was paying him to promote its stock. This comes just a few weeks before Paxton's impeachment trial is set to start. Right now, the suspended attorney general is asking the committee about his case be thrown out. Paxton is arguing that the witnesses were not under oath, violating state law. He also filed a motion to dismiss nearly all charges against him earlier this week. Nearly 50% of Texas counties are considered maternity care deserts. That's according to a new report from the March of Dimes Prenatal Data Center. The report shows 15,000 babies were born in areas without a hospital or birthing centers last year. It is time to start thinking about your fall vaccines. CBS and Walgreens are both offering the flu and RSV vaccine and plan to offer the updated COVID vaccine once the FDA approves it. And the birth control pill Tidemi is being recalled over possible reduced effectiveness. The effective pills were distributed between May 31st and June 3rd. 
it has once again renewed the drought disaster declaration for multiple Texas counties. Those include Bear, Blanco, and Hayes counties. According to the National Integrated Drought Information System, a little over 14.6 million Texans are living under drought conditions. And the city of Blanco near San Antonio also struggling to maintain its water supply. Blessing Ibachuku shows us how things got so bad in the first place. It was a man-made issue. That's what the mayor of Blanco is blaming on what caused the water crisis his city experienced for weeks. And the courthouse, and that is the city hall. Mike Arnold is the new leader of Blanco. What a time to be mayor. <laughs> Never a dull moment, that's for sure. Just a little over a month had passed since he was elected to lead this rural city located in the heart of the Texas Hill Country, and he already had a major crisis on his hands. I got a call first thing in the morning that our water tank was down to zero. The water flowing, uh, we'd run dry within a day. This led to severe water restrictions for the small town of less than 2,000 people. Everything's dying. The only thing we can really do is make sure the animals have a little bit of water. At one point, community was water rationing. Our biggest employer, Real Ale, number three brewery in the State of, independent brewery in the state of Texas had to shut down. They employ uh, 50 families to get their money from those paychecks. The, the cement plant missed a day of production. The car wash was shut down over the weekend. The wash tier was shut down over the weekend. He says the city's primary water source is the Blanco River, but there are two problems with that right now. This one right here. The nearly 70 year old water treatment plant is down for upgrades. He says even if it was up and running, the city still couldn't pull much water out of the river. It looks about two and a half feet down right now. It's been a while since it was up and flowing like it should. That's why Blanco is relying on its backup water supply, which comes out of Canyon Lake. The city owns water rights there. And then we pay a company to... The ending part is what the mayor says the company wasn't doing. Originally, he thought the city was in a water dilemma yeah, due to the low lake and river yeah, levels and recent rains barely making an impact. He now says this issue okay, wasn't an I'll act of God, but man. Somebody at the company at some level for some reason decided to let the water keep flowing to Bulverde where they're watering their lawns and washing cars and not enforcing restrictions at the expense of letting Blanco's tank water table. And we're enforcing the restrictions. That tank, uh, it's being supplied with water, but because of the high demand of water, the, the, the level on that day was low enough to where the city of Blanco's pumps couldn't turn on. So um, I, I just want to make sure that everybody's clear. It's not like we made a decision not to, to provide them water. It's a classic case of he said, they said. Our, our legal counsel advises us that not only was their uh, cutting our water supply a, uh, a violation of our memorandum of understanding, you know, a written agreement with them, told that it was very uh, likely a violation of the law as well. We dispute those statements. Lawyers for the city and the company plan to settle this water fight through All mediation, hoping to come to an amicable resolution. The bottom line is there's plenty of water for our needs. One thing is for sure. Mayor Mike is grateful. The crisis is over for now. All right, before we head to break, we do want to thank you for spending your morning with Spectrum News One. Yeah, it's our privilege to offer unbiased reporting from communities all across Texas. And don't forget to download the Spectrum News One app so that you can connect with us. We'll be right back. I am most satisfied when I'm making it get to go to work every day and communicate with fellow Texans who understand that quality of life matters and the choices we make matter. And if they can trust me to share important information with them, then I am a happy camper. I'm Dr. Nicole Cross, anchor for Spectrum News One. From coast to coast, you've seen us around. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our commitment runs deep. We're invested here, creating good jobs and supporting small businesses, many of which we're proud to call customers. You count on us to keep you connected to what matters most. And we're committed to delivering you the best internet, TV, and mobile service. We're Spectrum, connecting the places we all call home. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect.
day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. Weather can be beautiful, inconvenient, and at times, powerful. And it affects everything we do. At Spectrum News One, our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so you can better plan your day. And we do it every 10 minutes. We're the calm in the storm. Weather on the ones on Spectrum News One. And get your weather anytime on the Spectrum News app. Hey there, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ricky Cody. Great that you're great that you're here with us here on Spectrum News One. We, of course, are still talking about the heat and excessive heat warning once again in effect for all of the Dallas Fort Worth area outside of that heat advisories. And that is because we are not looking at any any relief over the course of the next several days and it will likely be expanded, uh, extended rather into tomorrow. Now to add insult to injury, we also have fire concerns. In fact, we have red flag warnings issued for Tarrant County, basically up and along the interstate and points out towards the west. This is due to the ongoing drought. We've got plenty of ground fuel, the lack of rain, all aiding in for wire, wild, uh, aiding in wildfires to spread quickly and we'll have to keep an eye on that yet again today but we're not alone up and down i-35 even in parts of oklahoma is where we have the fire concern today high troll of our forecast it's going to kind of meander across the state in the days to come by the time we get into about friday it's going to be back towards the west but we're still under it's under its influence meaning more triple digit heat right through the upcoming weekend that may bring us by the time we get to the second half of the weekend and into early next week it may be far enough to the west to bring in a cold front, but I think it's pretty much going to stall out. It looks like right now along the Red River. It's not going to bring us a drop in temperatures, but it could bring us a little bit of rain and that may may drop us into the 90s by the middle part of next week. We'll have to see if that plays out. In the meantime, just more of the same 106 today. Excessive heat warning in effect. Again, a mostly sunny day wall to wall sunshine really overnight tonight. A warm, a muggy one dropping down to 83. Here's your extended seven day forecast. We'll go 106 on Friday, 107 on Saturday, 106 on Sunday, and then we may be able to bring a stray or spotty shower in. With Texas is cracking down on illegal street racing and street takeovers. Governor Greg Abbott signed two bills into law yesterday in Fort Worth with Mayor Maddie Parker. Both laws will help prosecute reckless drivers and confiscate their cars and other items found. Fire crews say the Blum fire in Hill County is now completely contained. It burned more than 300 acres after sparking last week. The Texas A&M Forest Service says fire departments from across the state have been released, but local crews will stay on scene to keep an eye on hot spots. Texans living in Wise County are back in their homes after evacuation orders were lifted for the Boone's Creek fire last night. That fire is now 70% contained and spans an estimated eight. In a car vandalism spree, they say these three are believed to have vandalized 17 cars over the weekend with racist and vulgar graffiti. Well, gas prices on the rise once again here in Texas. The average price for a gallon is now at $3.49. That is up 10 cents from last week. This comes as oil prices surge to more than $80 a barrel. And because of that, President Biden says he's delaying plans to restock the country's emergency oil reserve until he can get a better deal. But with the Texas coastline just a drive away, more people are choosing to buy their vacation homes rather than just booking a hotel. Crystal Dominguez explains how that's helping the popular tourist resort town of Port Aransas. City officials here in Port Aransas tell me that while the city continues to grow significantly, it is limited because of the number of protected areas. Jose Hernandez has been landscaping houses in Port Aransas for years. When I come over here, it was nothing. He says when he started off in 2010, he worked on a few homes here and there. It was like a 
20, 30 houses. But today, he's a busy man, thanks to a housing surge across Mustang Island. So now it's growing so fast. Many of these properties are second homes or vacation homes for Texans. So most of our buyers are from Austin, San Antonio, Houston, and Dallas. Keith McMullen is a broker for Port Aransas Realty. He says it's the luxury beachfront properties that are attracting buyers. For the second quarter, the median price of homes in Port Aransas was $685,000. To provide context across the Texas coast, the median price for Galveston, North Padre, and South Padre $100,000 range. Most people still think of Galveston or South Padre Island as the big Texas beach communities because they have been for generations. He says there's been a shift, saying a surge began in 2020 during the pandemic when the work from home movement began. Well, if I'm going to be you know, working from home, what about having a vacation home? McMillan says no matter how much future development is planned, there will still be a lot of green space. Mustang Island is 18 miles long. A third of the island is a state park, so it's protected. Along with a protected 1,200-acre nature preserve, the wetlands and dunes along the beachfront. Keep people safe and secure. Port Aransas City Manager David Parsons says the city just adopted a comprehensive, long-range plan to support the demand. The, with the right police force, the right EMS, you know, the right way. Referring to emergency evacuations for hurricanes. That can move, you know, X amount of traffic in a, in a safe manner. Expanding highways, connecting to the mainland, and increasing the size of ferries. Well, the Houston Astros are riding high after a three-game sweep of Cleveland. Last night, the Astros beat the Guardians 3-2. to two. Houston now heads to New York, where they will face off against the Yankees tonight at 6. Up in Dallas, the Texas Rangers also coming off a big win. The team crushed the White Sox last night 11-1. They'll look for a sweep this afternoon in Game 3. And soccer superstar Lionel Messi coming here to Texas as Inter-Miami is set to play FC Dallas this weekend. FC Dallas, no surprise, expecting a sellout crowd for Messi's first Texas appeal on sale today at 11 a.m. So you got to act fast if you want to see Messi in Texas. Good morning, DFW. Let's talk about what you're going to see out on your morning commute this morning. Over in Allen, we have the report of a crash. This is on the northbound lanes of the Central Expressway right at Renner Road. Also, good morning to everyone over in Carrollton and good morning to everyone over in DeSoto. Looks like traffic is moving very smoothly this morning, so that's a good thing. We'll be right back. The strength of Texas is in its many voices and unique perspectives. Every Sunday, join host Carla Leal on In Focus Texas. Education, economy, immigration, and more. Balance matters impacting Texas from experts across the state. We take a closer look at the issues in your community. In Focus Texas, Sunday mornings at 930 on Spectrum News 1, available on all your favorite devices. So you're telling me this one-size-fits-all network upgrade is the best you guys can do? Better than that. It's the only thing we do. That's how we know it's right for you. Aye, aye, aye. Is that what I said? No, I think you were okay. Ah! I think that's a yes. We get it. Ask for the technology you need, and they call you unreasonable. We call you something else. Our kind of client. So go ahead. Be unreasonable. I'll be here to hear what's on your mind Take this time to talk and get it right You know I'll be there life. When you need me, I'll be by your side Little everyday conversations about the dangers of underage drinking can make a big difference in a child's life Today at Zilker Park, where folks from across the state of Texas are coming together for the discussion.
At Spectrum News, we're committed to our communities around the clock, delivering stories that inspire and news that matters in your community. Our journalists are dedicated to bringing you trusted, balanced local news every day. And now, Spectrum Internet-only customers, you can watch Spectrum News 1 on your TV, connecting you to your community 24-7. Spectrum News, now streaming exclusively for Spectrum customers. Today, tens of millions of Americans are under heat alerts. A heat dome is sitting over the southern part of the U.S. right now. And here in Texas, almost every major metro area will see triple digit temperatures today. This week, Dallas, San Angelo, Del Rio, Laredo and Victoria all broke all time high temperature records. The intense heat being being felt across the state is also having an effect on vineyards in the hill country. Our Amber Hughes takes us to one of them to show us how their work changes when temperatures hit triple digits. These grapes will eventually be the sun is forcing winemakers to harvest early. It's not too hot, is no, it? No, it's perfect. <laughs> perfect day for picking grapes. There's plenty of grapes ready to be handpicked at Bending Branch Winery. Oh, they're looking great. Dr. Bob Young practiced family medicine for 35 years, but at age 60, he transitioned into winemaking with his family in Comfort, Texas. I'd always loved wine, particularly red wines. It's always really fun picking the grapes and it's a lot of camaraderie and friends and family. That fun in the sun comes at a cost. Dr. Bob says heat makes fruit grow faster, so they're having to harvest the grapes weeks earlier. If we waited another week or 10 days, these would be shriveled, shriveled and dried out. Temperatures in Texas are exceeding 100 degrees weekly, causing some of the grapes to shrivel, which isn't good for wine production. The original, we changed plans. At Bending Branch, the grape vines are positioned higher to create more shade. But Dr. Bob says intense heat causes grapes to lose flavor and acidity. They're starting to just some the touch of drying a little bit. So instead of letting them dry more in this intense heat, we're gonna pick them and we're gonna make a sparkling rosé. Texas is the fifth largest wine producer in the country, contributing $20 billion to the state's economy annually. In 2022, more than 2 million tourists visited wineries across the state. And after four hours of picking nearly two tons of grapes, everyone toasts to the winery's biggest harvest. Here's to the best team in the Hill Country. Dr. Bob says the heat is the biggest factor affecting growth and quality of grapes. But as the grapes are soared and pressed, he's more concerned about how the Texas heat could... People that are getting injured and dying from heat stress. Climate change is happening all around us, so you got to accommodate to... It was to Mother Nature. A team known across the country and across the world, but the team that belongs to Texas. The franchise of legends, traditions, and success is also an organization intent on being the best once again. What is going to make this year the year? Daily coverage from Cowboys training camp continues right now. It is time for our daily check of the Dallas Cowboys as training camp continues today. The intensity picking up a bit as the boys put on their pads for the first time, but Micah Parsons definitely doesn't mind. Aside from Dak Prescott, he's probably the best and most important player on this team in only 26 sacks. And by the way, things are looking at camp. He is due for a lot more. I'm ready to take everybody to the deep water. You know, everybody comfortable when they knees in the water. I'm ready to go out to the deep water. I hope everybody prepared to go into the deep water. Um, in terms of my conditioning, where I'm at, 
how I determined how I was going to get better this year, I think it's through the roof. I just hope everybody's ready. And I told this to the guys, is the price of discipline worth the lifetime of regret? And uh, for me, it just it just don't. You know, I just feel like you only got so long. You only got this edge, but for so long to, you know, get a real shot at this. And I really do believe we got a shot at this. All right, here's a question for you. Has Texas's favorite fast food chain fallen off? Well, some Redditors seem to think so. Recently, a user posted the question, has anyone noticed how absolutely trashy Whataburger has become? A flood of comments, and surprisingly, most of the users says it has. Now the question is why, and to no one's surprise, many blame the fact that it's no longer a family-owned business after being sold to a Chicago-based investment firm back in 2019. Uh, that's, a, that's a question that gets a Texan riled up, is, is whether you like Whataburger or not. You know, that sounds like that was written by somebody who is an In-N-Out fan, and they're like, ew, Whataburger, mm -hmm. but no, In-N-Out is trash, and I will die on that hill. We're talking about Whataburger here. I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's get one thing at a time here. Well, it sounds like it was written from someone who's like, I'm not eating at Whataburger. When's the last time you had Whataburger? It, it's been a while. Before 2019, you think? No, 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 no. I've definitely had it in this calendar year, but... Okay. And you loved it. That was good. It lives yeah. up to the hype. Yeah, I was fine. You still got it. I had no complaints, you still got no it. notes. Ate it up. <laughs> Ate it up. The decisions elected officials make really have an impact on all of us. A big part of what we do on Capitol tonight is break down the issues so that they're easily understood. We want to bring you a better understanding of local issues and the local impact of national issues with relevant in-depth conversations that provide context for Texans in a balanced and in weeknights at 7 on Spectrum News 1. They say the best things in life are free. That's why Spectrum Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. Hey, so I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. <laughs> Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months with no contracts. Call 1-844-537-2999, visit spectrum.com slash get connected or Spectrum store today. It's the best deal in mobile. Free mobile sounds good. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Spectrum Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. OK, but what's the catch? Is it contracts? No contracts, no catch. Get one line for $29.99, and the second line is free. All with no taxes or hidden fees. Whew. Man, I'm switching to Spectrum. You see it? Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get months. Call 1-844-537-2999. Get the best deal in mobile. Switch, Switch to, to Spectrum. Spectrum. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. It's 7 o'clock. Be the office hero and show up with breakfast from Ellen's. Drama News in 90. Fort Worth could add over 70 new firefighters to its department after a committee recommendation to the city council earlier this week. The Fort Worth report says the proposal outlines two recruitment classes, one in September and the other one in February.
Lanes in Plano's U.S. Highway 75 are back open after a fury crash yesterday involving a tractor trailer. Two people were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. And a dead person has been found caught in the Rio Grande buoys. That's according to the Dallas Morning News. Mexican officials say DPS alerted them of the body. The cause of death and nationality of the person have not been released. DPS has not responded to the report. All right, now it's time for a look at the forecast and your weather on the ones. Well, the heat isn't going anywhere. It is the hottest part of the year, for goodness sake. 106 today, 106 on Friday, and even with more heat expected by the second half of the weekend into early next week. An excessive heat warning issued for us here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I'll let you know what that means, plus the concern for again fire danger. Details coming up. At the Texas-Mexico border, a body has been found stuck in Texas's floating buoy bar barriers. Mexican officials say a Texas DPS alerted them to the body. The cause of death and nationality of the person have not been released, and DPS has not responded to the report. Governor Abbott ordered those buoys to be installed last month to try to stop illegal immigrant crossings, but federal officials from both the U.S. and Mexico say they pose a significant safety concern. The DOJ is suing Texas to take them out of the river. And Governor Abbott is not backing down. He made this comment yesterday when asked about that DOJ lawsuit. Take a look. I thought President Biden uh, would send me a thank you note uh, for what Texas is doing to secure the border. It may be a, a big check uh, for all the money the state of Texas is, is investing to do the federal government's job. I believe that the constitutional right of the state of Texas to secure our border and to defend our sovereignty supersedes uh, any statute. And in Eagle Pass, a city park has been off limits to its residents while state troopers installed those buoys and arrested migrants in the area. Yeah, but as our John Salazar shows us, not everyone is happy with the takeover by Operation Lone Star. The Battle of Shelby Park in Eagle Pass is now won, and locals are celebrating to get this green space back from the jurisdiction of DPS. They're so Tuesday night to rescind an agreement between the city of Eagle Pass and DPS, which gave them unprecedented operational control of this green space. During breakfast, the morning after the Eagle Pass City Council, all those in favor? Unanimously voted to take back Shelby Park. Talks continue to undo what Operation Lone Star has done. The Eagle Pass Border Coalition is going to file some Freedom of Information Act requests and we're going to find out who authorized the concertina wire, who authorized the canisters. These canisters, the wire, is what America Garcia Graywall with the Eagle Pass Border Coalition is tackling next. This is just the first step. The way we're being represented in our own community by outsiders. After the Tuesday night showdown, she and other activists are now focused on all that remains of... How can we do this better? How can we be more effective? Because this is just the first step, and, you know, things have to change. Former Maverick County Commissioner Anastasia Guajardo is more direct about what he wants. You want those containers gone? Uh, gone, gone. I mean, it, it, there's, no, there's no reason to have them. I mean, can you remember? It's just a show. After Tuesday night's meeting, Mayor Rolando Salinas address why he unilaterally signed over the park to DPS. I made that decision because at that time, it was a situation I thought was uh, for the safety of the community. There's Salinas went on to say that his signature on this affidavit was intended to arrest migrants caught on park property, adding state troopers went rogue with the wire, canisters, and buoys, while at the same time blocking public access to their park. Uh, DPS, ultimately, I think they're going to do what they want to do. So one thing is for us rescinding and then we'll see what DPS does. The bottom line for the Eagle Pass natives is this. Operation Lone Star must change the way they currently operate. Get together and do something decent and humane to, to, to uh, discuss what, what they're going to do to 
for the, all the people that are coming in. We can have border security without the cruelty, and that's what I want here in my hometown to be with us. Illegal border crossings are on the rise again. For the month of July, border agents arrested more than 130,000 people. That is a 30% increase from June. But the Texas Tribune reports that the spike in migrant crossings was mostly seen in southern Arizona, where about 40,000 arrests were made. Well, this triple-digit heat is putting a strain on our power grid. Stood up to the test. Here's a look at today's supply and demand forecast for you. You can see peak demand will come around 4 p.m. Looks like conditions will be tight, but we will have enough energy to keep the AC running. And right now, several areas of Texas under critical wildfire risk. In Bastrop County, fire crews are fighting their second wildfire of the week. The Mesquite Field Fire is now burning about 40 acres and is about 80% contained. It's located 30 miles south of the Powder Keg Pine Fire, which is more than 100 acres now and 75% contained. And further east near Houston, at least two firefighters are recovering after being burned by the Snow Hill Fire in San Jacinto County. They had to be taken to the hospital. Let's go ahead and bring in uh, Chief Meteorologist Ricky Cody. Ricky, uh, good morning once again. So red flag warnings for many parts of Texas today. Can you explain what that means for Texans out there? Yeah, so we had red flag warnings in play yesterday. They were allowed to expire for most of the states or the counties at 9 p.m. And then today they've been reissued uh, from basically the Red River all the way down to San Antonio. And so when we have red flag warnings, this just means it's this area here that is the potential for not only any fires to develop, but they would spread re spread rather rather quickly. So the red flag warning is in effect until 9 o'clock tonight for all the counties here shaded in red. It's basically along and just west of I-35. A little more humidity as you get out towards the rolling, rather the uh, the Rio Grande Plains, and that helps to mitigate fire danger just a bit. But. We still have dry air. We've still got the ongoing drought, plenty of ground fuel. And as they just talked about a few moments ago, some significant fires in parts of central and south central Texas. So that's something we have to keep a close eye on. Now, to kind of remind you, uh, there's uh, 254 counties in the state of Texas, all but 90 all but 90 are currently under burn bans. So you're not supposed to be burning anything outdoors anyway. Uh, so again, continue to remember doors on, on accident either because you know you give your chains are dragging, that sort of thing, that can be a problem. Uh, what would be helpful is more rain. Well, not even more rain, rain at all. Uh, but we just don't have that in the forecast. Over the course of the next seven days, a big donut over the course of Texas. We'll show you that in your seven day forecast coming up. Fifteen teams, fifteen grand. One tournament to decide who knows the most about separating news fact from news fiction. One, two, three, seven. That is correct, Jacob. The Spectrum News Challenge Tournament. That sounds really awesome, man. <laughs> if you think you know the news, then it's time to take the challenge. Spectrum News Challenge, Wednesday nights at 8.30. Available on all your favorite devices on the reliability of our products and services. Now, we've taken a new step forward in reliability by identifying potential service issues before they become a problem. If you're affected, we'll contact you and help schedule a free service appointment with one of our expert technicians. The proactive maintenance of our network is one of the many reasons Spectrum delivers the most reliable internet speeds in the nation. Spectrum, keeping you connected. I never graduated from high school I realized I wanted to go back to school because I didn't want to work these back-breaking jobs the rest of my life. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed to come back to school. I felt accomplished. It made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. Find free adult education classes near you at Finish Your Diploma. It's hard as well. My dad started in the news business in 1955, so my dad was my idol. He was my mentor. I spent so much time in that world, I knew I just had to be a part of it. My life's purpose has been about informing, educating, and most importantly, connecting with people. It has been my passion to help people and make a difference in people's lives. I'm Brett Ship, anchor Spectrum News One.
Hey there, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ricky Cody. Great that you're great that you're here with us here on Spectrum News One. We of course are still talking about the heat and excessive heat warning once again in effect for all of the Dallas Fort Worth area outside of that because we are not looking at any any relief over the course of the next several days and it will likely be expanded uh, extended rather into tomorrow. Now to add insult to injury, we also have fire concerns. In fact, we have red flag warnings issued for Tarrant County, basically up and along the interstate and points out towards the west. This is due to the ongoing drought. We've got plenty of ground fuel, the lack of rain, all aiding in for wire wild aiding in wildfires to spread quickly and we'll have to keep an eye on that yet again today but we're not alone up and down i-35 even in parts of oklahoma is where we have the fire concern today high pressure that's the culprit maintains control of our forecast it's going to kind of meander across the state in the days to come by the time we get into about friday it's going to be back towards the west but we're still under its, under its influence meaning more triple digit heat right through the upcoming weekend that may bring us by the time we get to the second half of the weekend and into early next week it may be far enough up to the west to bring in a cold front, but I think temperatures, but it could bring us a little bit of rain and that may, may drop us into the 90s by the middle part of next week. We'll have to see if that plays out. In the meantime, just more of the same 106 today. Excessive heat warning in effect. Again, a mostly sunny day, wall to wall sunshine, really. Overnight tonight, a warm, a muggy one dropping down to 83. Here's your extended seven day forecast. We'll go 106 on Friday. 107 on Saturday, 106 on Sunday, and then we may be able to bring a stray or spotty shower in with that front Monday and Tuesday, possibly into the upper 90s, but then back to 102 by Wednesday. Texas is cracking down on illegal street racing and street takeovers. Governor Greg Abbott signed two bills in the law yesterday in Fort Worth with Mayor Maddie Parker. Both laws will help prosecute reckless drivers and confiscate their cars and other items found. Fire crews say the county is now completely contained. It burned more than 300 acres, burned more than 300 acres after sparking last week. The Texas A&M Forest Service says fire departments from across the state have been released, but local crews will stay on scene to keep an eye on hot spots. Texans living in Wise County are back in their homes after evacuation orders were lifted for the Boone's Creek fire last night. That fire is now 70% contained and spans an estimated 80 acres. And the Arlington Police Department has arrested and identified three teenagers suspected in a car vandalism spree. They say these three are believed to have vandalized 17 cars over the weekend with racist and vulgar graffiti. Economic alarm bells are sounding this morning after a prominent rating agency downgraded U.S. credit. This is the second down. Fitch Ratings is also forecasting that the U.S. will enter a recession later this year. And Airbnb is back in the spotlight again after reports of fewer bookings. Yeah, so now some owners are selling their properties to try and stop the financial bleeding. Our Michael Lozano explains getting that guest ready for the next group. Allen resident Pita Castillo manages a couple of Airbnbs in South Padre. Towards the end of COVID, we saw um, a big interest in bookings and reservations. But of late, she says the bookings have slowed down. Changes also to our cancellation policy, making it a little bit more flexible for people to plan their trip. It's a decline Airbnb owners are seeing nationwide. The Airbnb crash is ravaging Airbnb owners around America. The Airbnb collapse is real and it's here. A recent string of social media posts are leaving many worried of an Airbnb collapse. Some are citing data from a rental announce. The report shows major U.S. cities are seeing a more than 30% drop in revenue per available listing from 2022 to 2023, with places like Austin and San Antonio dropping 46 and 43% respectively. Michelle, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. But longtime North Texas realtor Cliff Freeman says those numbers are wrong. Are they doing this to sensationalize and get more business on YouTube? Or is there really, you know, meat on the bone here? While there has been a drop in 2023, Freeman cites a more accurate source in air DNA data. Those numbers only reveal a 7% drop for Austin and 4% drop 
for San Antonio. I certainly wouldn't take the position that the sky is going to be falling. It's a decline Freeman says is in part thanks to the post-pandemic era, with many Texans looking to travel abroad. People now are spending the big bucks to go and take the big market. Freeman isn't worried about any sort of collapse. Hi, Michael. Welcome. It's a hopeful outlook. I don't think that that is something to worry about at this time. Especially for those who oversee Airbnbs like Bitha. Well, down in Austin, Airbnb is looking to expand into apartments, which would allow renters to earn some extra cash. According to Axios, the company recently partnered with a number of complexes, allowing the renters to list units on the app. Airbnb says close to 3,000 units will be eligible to rent out, and renters could make over 1,300 bucks a month. Former President Donald Trump is scheduled to be back in court today for his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The judge in this case has also overseen several cases involving people who participated in the January 6th. General Ken Paxton will also be in court on security fraud charges. Paxton is accused of soliciting investors in a McKinney-based tech company back in 2011 without disclosing that the company was paying him to promote its stock. And approval of the Supreme Court is still at a record low. That's according to a recent poll from Gallup. Right now, approval of the nation's highest court stands at just 40 percent. We're going to have more Texas headlines and another check your forecast coming right up. Be sure to stay with us. Spectrum News One continues after this quick break. All right, Dallas-Fort Worth, the time is 7.18. Let's talk about some delays you might see out on the roads. Over in Plano, we have the report of a crash right here on the northbound lanes of the Central Expressway at Renner Road. Also, an incident report on the southbound lanes of 35W right at Western Center Boulevard. Let's take a look out on the roads. There's a live look over in Haltom City. And good morning to everyone over in Arlington. We'll be right back. I am most satisfied when I'm making a difference. I get to go to work every day and communicate with fellow Texans who understand that quality of life matters and the choices we make matter. And if they can trust me to share important information with them, then I'm a happy camper. I'm Dr. Nicole Cross, anchor for Spectrum News One. When you buy Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 a month, you get a second line. Or you can get one line for yourself and one line for your kid. Sold. Or both lines for yourself. I use one for business and another for business. I do a lot of business. Get one line of Unlimited for $29.99 and get a second line free for 12 months. Call, click, or visit a Spectrum store today. OK, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! you now and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. An answer to one of society's biggest questions may be found in the youngest minds. Does poverty impact a child's development? Their performance mothers who have access to cash raise babies with stronger brain development. The basis of the baby's first year study is really to understand whether providing economic support would change children's trajectories. Exploring your health. Budgeting for brain development. Available on all your favorite devices.
for allegedly criticizing the lieutenant governor says she never told students Dan Patrick believed kids who died of an overdose deserved it. She says her comments have been mischaracterized. In Houston, KDISD will now allow district trustees to ban books without a review committee. Moving forward, the district can now ban a book as long as two board members agree on it. And Houston ISD is looking to opt out of union meetings to discuss employee work conditions. Next week, the school board will vote on whether or not to continue their monthly consultations. And right now, millions of Texans do not have access to reliable Internet. Our J.J. Maldado shows us what the state is doing to bridge this digital divide. Having uh, the technology and having access to the internet to make that even possible is really a crucial piece of our education system right now. Dr. McDonald is the director of digital learning at Bastrop ISD. It is making sure students have equitable access to technology. She joined county leaders and other organizations to discuss how unreliable access to the internet hinders Texans in rural counties, especially when it comes to education, health care, and finding a job. One of the things that was uh, of great discussion is the importance of um, having access um, and affordability were some of the concerns from our community members. According to U.S. Census Bureau data, nearly three million Texas households lack broadband access. Greg Conti is the director of the Broadband Development Office. His team is going across the state, surveying communities like Bastrop, asking them about affordability, access, and usage. The survey will help them plan as they fund grants in 2024 to expand broadband access in areas across the state. We're hearing all these different stories on why folks across the state cannot access uh, reliable broadband. And so as the funding comes into the side from all those different inputs. Dr. McDonald says the pandemic has streamlined how school districts leverage technology and use the internet to support students. It was definitely enlightening to kind of think through like what what opportunities do we currently have here? What are some things that we need to expand access and what benefits that would be for us and kind of think through some of those gaps. The broadband office will be making stops in the coming weeks across the state from central, east, west, and north Texas. Charter Communications is the parent company of Spectrum and Spectrum News. And rural Texas uh, may lose out on billions in broadband infrastructure funding due to federal regulations. Texas was recently awarded over $3 billion to expand Internet access, but to get the money, applicants have to have a line of credit from a major bank and put up 25% of the project. Well, the state of Texas is cracking down on street racing and street takeovers. Governor Greg Abbott signed two bills into law yesterday. One of the new laws makes it easier to prosecute reckless drivers. The other makes it possible for police to impound the cars used in these crimes. And the commission of these crimes should be taken off the road immediately. For the people out there pushing around those 2,500 pound missiles, those chuckleheads, we want to make it perfectly clear that we're coming after you. The light will be on, on at the jailhouse, and regardless of jail overcrowding, we'll always have room for them. New rules will take effect in September. All right, it's official. Willie, the rodeo goat, is safe and sound thanks to these two Austin Millicent County Cowboys. They held a week now. The rodeo says they are planning to award them with a prize. Do you see how unhappy Willie looks in that picture? Uh, no, I don't read goats' faces very well. No. But tell us how unhappy you think Willie he's is. He's pretty. I, I, I stand by my suspicion you think that he's Willie. Not happy to be home? Willie didn't want to be captured. He wanted to be out. He wanted to be free. He wanted to go start a life somewhere. Maybe in the big city. He wanted to be a yeah. city goat. He was tired of the country life. Oh, you think he was like making his way to Dallas or something? I think like so. That? Yeah. I mean, I think he wanted to get up there ahead of, you know, football season. Maybe he got some. Oh, so tickets. Willie's a Cowboys fan now. Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Exactly. Who do you think Willie's favorite player is? I think Willie uh, Willie supports good defense, so I think he's a big Micah Parsons guy. So I'm just happy for these two Cowboys because the the awards that they get from the city. I mean, it was like five, over five thousand dollars from rounding up a goat. They got a lot, and so yeah. hopefully Willie gets a little bit. He gets to cash in. <laughs> they need it all. Home. Welcome home, <laughs> Willie. <laughs>
The decisions elected officials make really have an impact on all of us. A big part of what we do on Capitol tonight is break down the issues so that they're easily understood. We want to bring you a better understanding of local issues and the local impact of national issues with relevant in-depth conversations that provide context for Texans in a balanced and informative way. Capital Tonight, weeknights at 7 on Spectrum News 1. Spectrum Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. So I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. It's the best deal in mobile. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Spectrum Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. Get one line for $29.99. All with no taxes or hidden fees. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1-844-882-2999. Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. A thriving community is an informed community, and being able to play a role in bringing people the news is something that I take very seriously. There's just so many things to love about the state of Texas. Southern hospitality, great food. I love that there are so many different cultures celebrate on in the morning and feel like they've got the information they need to go out and conquer their day. I'm Alex Stockwell, anchor for Spectrum News One. Weather on the Ones, every 10 minutes. Also available on the Spectrum News app. Good morning, Dallas Fort Worth. I'm Lisa Hernandez, and this is your Spectrum News in 90. The Houston Chronicle reports Texas DPS is continuing to separate families at the border. They say fathers are being detained on trespassing charges while their children and wives are transferred to Border Patrol agents. There were nearly 30 men arrested last month. Denton has used over $1 million of federal funding to help the local homeless shelter, Our Daily Bread. The money will be and Lionel Messi will be in Dallas this weekend. The Argentinian soccer player will take the field as Dallas FC faces Inter Miami at Frisco's Toyota Stadium. Tickets for the match go on sale today at 11 a.m. All right, now it's time for a look at your forecast and your weather on the ones. An excessive heat warning once again in effect for the Dallas-Fort Worth area today. Please continue to practice your heat safety precautions. Do not become complacent. It is hot out there. At lunchtime, we're at 98. We're off to the races and back to about 105 to 106 as we get into the afternoon. On top of that, we have concerns for once again fire danger. I'll show you that in your seven day coming up in a minute. Today, El Paso is honoring the victims of the tragic El Paso Walmart shooting. Yeah, 23 people were killed in that third, making it the deadliest attack on Hispanic people in U.S. history. Today, the city of El Paso will be honoring the victims with a special bell tolling ceremony. There will also be a blood drive, altar creation, and community prayer events happening across the city. And it was just a few weeks ago that the El Paso shooter was finally sentenced on federal charges. He is now serving 90 consecutive life sentences, but he still faces the death penalty when he goes to trial on state charges. That could start next year or in 2025. Today, former President Donald Trump is due in court to answer charges that he tried to overturn the 2020 election results. The former president faces four charges, including conspiracy to defraud the United States. Today, he was, quote, determined to remain in power and orchestrated a plot to overturn the election with six co-conspirators. Let's go ahead and send things out now to our Washington correspondent, Angie Gonzalez. She's got the latest from outside of the courthouse this morning. Angie, what's it like out there? 
Well, Alex and Charles, early this morning, well, I could say last night, people started lining up outside of the courthouse, trying to get one of those coveted seats inside the smaller courtroom, which today's proceedings will take place. They went in, some of them, a short time ago, even though this court hearing is not scheduled for several more hours. Trump is expected to be processed by law enforcement, be officially taken into custody and enter a not guilty plea in front of a judge on the following counts in the indictment against him. Conspiracy to defraud the United States, witness tampering, obstruction of and attempt to obstruct an official proceeding and conspiracy against rights of citizens. Despite courthouse, it'll be up to him and ultimately Secret Service whether or not we see him at any point as cameras are not allowed inside the federal courthouse and he's expected to be escorted in through an under ground entrance, much like he did in Florida in the classified documents case. There is no shortage of people talking about this case. While many Republicans in Congress are coming to Trump's defense, there are others, including Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr, that have a different take on today's hearing. I have come to believe that he uh, knew well that he had lost the election. And uh, now what, what I think is important is the government has assumed the burden of proving that the government in their indictment takes the position that he had actual knowledge that he had lost the election and the election wasn't stolen through fraud. And Angie, as you mentioned, we're still several hours away from uh, Trump actually arriving. So what is the scene like out there? Ready around the courthouse. We've seen folks from Homeland Security. We've seen folks from Secret Service all here outside of the courthouse, sort of making sure that things uh, stay calm. We haven't seen too many Trump supporters just yet. But as you mentioned, there are still several hours before this court hearing is scheduled to take place. And we do expect them to arrive here at some point. Angie, talk to us real quickly about security measures. Are they setting up any gates or perimeters around the courthouse area? Yeah, so if you'll remember around January 6th when this all took place, there were uh, very high security gates that were placed around uh, the Capitol building. Uh, there are security gates here, metal ones, but they are certainly not as high as those ones that we've seen erected near the Supreme Court, say, for example. Uh, they are about waist height, um, but we do know that there are law enforcement officials very visible around here that are also here to uh, present, you know, that they're not going to president's security and they're not going to be um, uh, willing to stand anybody who's going to disrupt the uh, normal proceeding of events here today. All right, Angie Gonzalez reporting for us in Washington, D.C. Angie, thank you. And after the indictment was handed down, many Republicans, including ones from Texas, rushed to support the current GOP frontrunner. Texas Senator Ted Cruz posted on X calling the new indictments a weaponization of our legal system. And Congressman Troy Nels says Trump is not responsible for what happened during the January 6th riots. He's also calling the Department of Justice corrupt. But Democrats say no one is above the law. The most combustible thing you can do in a democracy is convince people that an election doesn't count, that their voice and their vote don't count. Today, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton will also be in court on security fraud charges. Paxton is accused in a McKinney-based tech company back in 2011 without disclosing that the company was paying him to promote its stock. This comes just a few weeks before Paxton's impeachment trial is set to begin. Right now, the suspended attorney general is asking that all statements made to the investigative, investigative committee about his case be thrown out. Paxton is arguing that those witnesses were not under oath, which violates state law. Paxton also filed a motion to dismiss nearly all charges against him earlier this week. Well, nearly 50% of Texas counties are considered maternity, day, day, maternity care deserts. That's according to a new report from the March of Dimes Prenatal Data Center. The report shows 15,000 babies were born in areas without a hospital or birthing centers last year. CVS and Walgreens will both offer the flu and RSV vaccine, and they plan to offer the updated COVID vaccine once the FDA approves it. And the birth control pill, Tidemi, is being recalled over possible reduced effectiveness. The affected pills were distributed between May 31st and June 3rd. 
All right, before we head to break, we do want to say thank you for spending your morning with Spectrum News One. It is our privilege to offer unbiased reporting from communities across the state. And as we head to break, let's take a look at the Riverwalk in San Antonio this morning. Things look pretty cool out there, but we are in for another scorcher across Texas. Stick around. Weather can be beautiful, inconvenient, and at times powerful, and it affects everything we do. At Spectrum News One, our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so you can better plan your day. And we do it every 10 minutes. We're the calm in the storm. Weather on the ones on Spectrum News One. And get your weather anytime on the Spectrum News app. From coast to coast, you've seen us around. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our commitment runs deep. We're invested here, creating good jobs and supporting small businesses, many of which we're proud to call customers. You count on us to keep you connected to what matters most. And we're committed to delivering you the best internet, TV, and mobile service. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. Spectrum News One is Texas strong. It's not just the Friday night lights, the skies you need to see to believe. It's the people, the communities, the character. That's what makes us Texans. From our experienced boots on the ground teams to a new perspective on the news that matters to Dallas Fort Worth, we bring you the inspiring stories that leave a lasting impact across our. Hey there everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Ricky Cody. Great that, you're, great that you're here with us here on Spectrum News One. We of course are still talking about the heat and excessive heat warning once again in effect for all of the Dallas-Fort Worth area outside of that heat advisories. That is because we are not looking at any any relief over the course of the next several days and it will likely be expanded, uh, extended rather into tomorrow. Now to add insult to injury, we also have fire concerns. In fact, we have red flag warnings issued for Tarrant County, basically up and along the interstate and points out towards the west. This is due to the ongoing drought. We've got plenty of ground fuel, the lack of rain, all aiding in for wire, wild uh, aiding in wildfires to spread yet again today, but we're not alone. Up and down I-35, even in parts of Oklahoma is where we have the fire concern today. High pressure, that's the culprit, maintains control of our forecast. It's going to kind of meander across the state in the days to come. By the time we get into about Friday, it's going to be back towards the west, but we're still under, under its influence, meaning more triple digit heat right through the upcoming weekend. That may bring us, by the time we get to the second half of the weekend and into early next week, it may be far enough to the west to bring in a cold front, but I think it's pretty much going to stall out. It looks like right now along the Red River. It's not going to bring us a drop in temperatures, but it could bring us a little bit of rain and that may may drop us into the 90s by the middle part of next week. We'll have to see if that plays out. In the meantime, just more of the same 106 today. Excessive heat warning in effect. Again, a mostly sunny day wall to wall sunshine really overnight tonight. A warm, a muggy one dropping down to 83. Here's your extended 7 day forecast. We'll go 106 on Friday, 107 on Saturday, 106 on Sunday. May be able to bring a stray or spotty shower in with that front Monday and Tuesday, possibly into the upper 90s, but then back to 102 by Wednesday. Texas is cracking down on illegal street racing and street takeovers. Governor Greg Abbott signed two bills into law yesterday in Fort Worth with Mayor Maddie Parker. Both laws will help prosecute reckless drivers and confiscate their cars and other items found. Fire crews say the Blum Fire in 
Hill County is now completely contained. It burned more than 300 acres after sparking last week. The Texas A&M Forest Service says fire departments from across the state have been released, but local crews will stay on scene to keep an eye on hot spots. Texans living in Wise County are back in their homes after evacuation orders were lifted for the Boone's Creek fire lab and spans an estimated 80 acres. And the Arlington Police Department has arrested and identified three teenagers suspected in a car vandalism spree. They say these three are believed to have vandalized 17 cars over the weekend with racist and vulgar graffiti. Well, gas prices on the rise again here in Texas. The average price for a gallon is now at $3.49. That is up 10 cents from last week. This comes as oil prices surge to more than $80 a barrel. Because of that, President Biden says he's delaying plans to restock the country's emergency oil reserve until he can get a better deal. And with the Texas coastline just to drive away, more people are choosing to buy vacation homes rather than just booking a hotel. Crystal Dominguez shows us how that's helping the popular tourist resort town. That while the city continues to grow significantly, it is limited because of the number of protected areas that surround it. Jose Hernandez has been landscaping houses in Port Aransas for years. When I came over here, it was nothing. He says when he started off in 2010, he worked on a few homes here and there. It was like uh, 20, 30 houses. But today, he's a busy man, thanks to a housing surge across Mustang Island. So now it's growing so fast. Many of these properties are second homes or vacation homes for Texans. So most of our buyers are from Austin, San Antonio, Houston, and Dallas. Keith McMullen is a broker for Port Aransas Realty. He says it's the luxury beachfront properties that are attracting buyers. For the second quarter, the median price of homes is $5,000. To provide context across the Texas coast, the median price for Galveston, North Padre, and South Padre Islands are in the $400,000 range. Most people still think of Galveston or South Padre Island as the big Texas beach communities because they have been for generations. He says there's been a shift, saying a surge began in 2020 during the pandemic when the work from home movement began. Well, if I'm going to be you know, working from home, what about having a vacation home? McMillan says no matter how much future development is planned, there will still be a lot of green space. Mustang Island is 18 miles long. A third of the island is a state park, so it's protected. Along with a protected 1,200-acre nature preserve, the wetlands and dunes along the beachfront. Keep people safe. Prehensive, long-range plan to support the demand. The, with the right police force, the right EMS, you know, the right fire, you know, the correct highway. Referring to emergency evacuations for hurricanes. That can move you know, X amount of traffic in a, in a safe manner. Expanding highways, connecting to the mainland and increasing the size of ferries. Well, the Houston Astros are riding high after a three game sweep of Cleveland. Last night, the Astros beat the Guardians three to two. Now Houston heads to New York where they will face off against the Yankees tonight at six. Up in Dallas, the Texas Rangers are also coming off a big win. The team crushed the White Sox last night, 11 to 1. They look for a sweep this afternoon in Game 3. And soccer superstar Lionel Messi is coming. Miami is set to play FC Dallas this weekend. FC Dallas, no surprise, expecting a sellout crowd for Messi's first Texas appearance. Tickets go on sale today at 11 a.m. We'll be right back. All right, guys, it's now 748. Let's talk about this crash that was reported earlier in the hour. Crews are still working to clean up. This is on the southbound lanes of 35W right at Western Center Boulevard, north of downtown uh, Fort Worth. Here's a look at some of your current drive times if you're headed into downtown Dallas this morning. If you're coming in from Grand Prairie, it's going to be about 22 minutes. But from Terrell, about right under an hour. And from Lancaster, 26 minutes. We'll be right back.
The strength of Texas is in its many voices and unique perspective in Focus Texas. Education, economy, immigration, and more. Balanced and respectful discussion of the serious matters impacting Texas from experts across the state. We take a closer look at the issues in your community. In Focus Texas, Sunday mornings at 930 on Spectrum News 1, available on all your favorite devices. So you're telling me this one-size-fits-all network upgrade is the best you guys can do? Better than that. It's the only thing we do. That's how we know it's right for you. Aye, aye, aye. Is that what I said? No, I think you were okay. I think that's a yes. We get it. Ask for the technology you need, and they call you unreasonable. We call you something else, our kind of client. So go ahead. Be unreasonable. Medicaid and CHIP offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. These programs cover doctors, prescriptions, shots, and more. As parents, we get peace of mind knowing that our children are covered if they are sick or get injured. You may now be eligible for Medicaid, too, even if you've applied in the past. Enrollment is always open. Visit insurekidsnow.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. We are connected, engaged, from the moment we rise, we move, we adjust, we learn, explore, relax, and grow together so we're ready to build a better tomorrow. Stay informed throughout your day with the Spectrum News app, exclusively for Spectrum customers. Today, tens of millions of Americans are under heat alerts with a heat dome sitting over the southern part of the U.S. Here in Texas, almost every major metro area will see triple digit temperatures today. This week, Dallas, San Angelo, Del Rio, Laredo and Victoria all broke all time high temperature records and the intense heat is being felt across the work changes when temperatures hit triple digits. These grapes will eventually become Texas wine, but the intense sun is forcing winemakers to harvest early. It's not too hot, is no, it? No, it's perfect. <laughs> perfect day for picking grapes. There's plenty of grapes ready to be handpicked at Bending Branch Winery. Oh, they're looking great. Dr. Bob Young practiced family medicine for 35 years, but at age 60, he transitioned into winemaking with his family in Comfort, Texas. I'd always loved wine, particularly red wines. It's always really fun picking the grapes, and it's a lot of camaraderie and friends and family. That fun in the sun comes at a cost. Dr. Bob says heat makes fruit grow faster, so they're having to harvest the grapes weeks earlier. If we waited another week or 10 days, these would be shrivel, shriveled and dried out. Temperatures in Texas are exceeding 100 degrees wheat grapes to shrivel, which isn't good for wine production. The original plan was to make a red wine from this one, but when the intense heat came, we changed plans. At Bending Branch, the grape vines are positioned higher to create more shade. But Dr. Bob says intense heat causes grapes to lose flavor and acidity. They're starting to just so the touch of drying a little bit. So instead of letting them dry more in this intense heat, we're gonna pick them and we're gonna make a sparkling rosé. Texas is the fifth largest wine producer in the country, contributing $20 billion to the state's economy annually. In 2022, more than 2 million tourists visited wineries across the state. 
And after four hours of picking nearly two tons of grapes, everyone toast to the winery's biggest harvest. Here's to the best team in the Hill Country. Dr. Bob says the heat is the biggest factor effect grapes. But as the grapes are sorted and pressed, he's more concerned about how the Texas heat could impact his staff. So many people that are getting injured and dying from heat stress. Climate change is happening all around us, so you gotta accommodate to, to mother nature. A team known across the country and across the world, but the team that belongs to Texas. The franchise of legends, traditions, and success is also an organization intent on being the best once again. What is going to make this year the year? Daily coverage from Cowboys training camp continues right now. It is time for our daily check of the Dallas Cowboys as training camp continues today. The intensity picking up as the boys put on their pack. Micah Parsons, he definitely doesn't mind. Aside from Doc Prescott, Parsons is probably the best and most important player on this team. In only two years, he's logged 26 sacks. And by the way, things are looking at camp. He's due for a lot more. I'm ready to take everybody to the deep water. You know, everybody comfortable when they knees in the water. I'm ready to go out into the deep water. I hope everybody prepared to go into the deep water. Um, in terms of my conditioning, where I'm at, how I determined how I was going to get better this year, I think it's through the roof. I just hope everybody's ready. And I tell you this to the guys, is the price of discipline worth the lifetime of regret? And uh, for me, it just, it just don't. You know, I just feel like you only got so long, you only got this edge, but for so long to you know, get a real shot at this. And I really do believe we got a shot at this. Well, here's a... Well, some Redditors seem to think so. Recently, a user posted the question, has anyone noticed how absolutely trashy Whataburger has become? Whoa. Exactly. The response led to a lot of comments, Ooh. as you can imagine. And surprisingly, though, hey, look, most of the users said it has. Now, the question is why? And to no one's surprise, many blame the fact that it's no longer a family-owned business after being sold to a Chicago-based investment firm back in 2019. I mean, those are fighting words. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I will confess, it's been a while since I've had Whataburger, yeah. but it's, it's always satisfied. It's never left me thinking, this is trash. Yeah, I don't really remember from... You know, before and before times. When, yeah. I, was, when I was younger, pre, we had, you had Waterburger when you, were, when you were going out. You know what I'm saying? So oh, the, yeah. the taste wasn't more. It was more about the feeling. You know what I mean? So I can't. You mean after a night out? Exactly. Yeah, that that type of Waterburger hits different than so, like a daytime Waterburger. I don't know. Maybe I have to go and test out this theory that they've Let's do some off. investigative journalism. I'm, I'm on. Down for that. I'm on. We'll be right back. We have one mission, and that is to serve our community. We have reporters on the ground sharing what's happening within their communities. It's my responsibility to know the issues here in Texas, who it affects. We want to make sure that you know what's going on in politics and weather and entertainment. You're going to get your local news. You're going to get storytelling about your local community. Your evening on Spectrum News One, weeknights starting at 5 p.m. Central. They say the best things in life are free. That's why Spectrum Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. Hey, so I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. <laughs> Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months with no contracts. Call 1-844-537-2999, visit Spectrum.com slash get connected or Spectrum store today. It's the best deal in mobile. Free mobile sounds good. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Spectrum Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. 
Okay, but what's the catch? Is it contracts? No contracts, no catch. Get one line for $29.99 and the second line is free. Oh, Ooh. man, I'm switching to Spectrum. You see it? Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1 844 537 $29.99. Get the best deal in mobile. Switch, Switch to, to Spectrum. Got some soup for you. You are valued. You are resilient. <laughs> you got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides mm -hmm. at aarp.org slash caregiving. It's 8 o'clock. Breakfast is being served at Ellen's downtown. Good morning, Dallas-Fort Worth. I'm Lisa Hernandez, and this is your Spectrum News in 90. Fort Worth could add over 70 new firefighters to its department. According to the Fort Worth report, a proposal for the boost in staffing outlines two recruitment classes, one in September and the other one in February. Lanes in Plano's U.S. Highway 75 are back open after a bad crash yesterday involving a tractor trailer. Two people were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Now, the cause of the crash is still under investigation. The fire burned yesterday for several hours. A dead person has been found caught in the Rio Grande buoys. That's according to the Dallas Morning News. Mexican officials say DPS alerted them of the body. The cause of death and nationality of the person have not been released, and DPS has not responded to the report. All right, now it's time for a look at your forecast and your weather on the ones. Where it is the hottest part of the year, for goodness sake. 106 today, 106 on Friday, and even hotter as we head into the weekend with more heat expected by the second half of the weekend into early next week. An excessive heat warning issued for us here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I'll let you know what that means, plus the concern for, again, fire danger. Details coming up. At the Texas-Mexico border, a body has been found stuck in Texas's floating buoy barriers. Mexican officials say Texas DPS alerted them to the body. The cause of death and nationality of the person have not been released, and DPS has not responded to the report. Governor Abbott ordered those buoys to be installed last month to try to stop illegal migrant crossings, but federal officials from both the U.S. and the DOJ is suing Texas to take them out of the river. Governor Abbott not backing down on his latest border efforts, though. He made this comment yesterday when asked about that DOJ lawsuit. Take a look. I thought President Biden uh, would send me a thank you note uh, for what Texas is doing to secure the border. It may be a, a big check uh, for all the money the state of Texas is, is investing to do the federal government's job. I believe that the constitutional right of the state of Texas to secure our border and to defend our sovereignty supersedes uh, any statute. And in Eagle Pass, a city park has been off limits to residents there while state troopers installed those buoys and the arrested migrants who were in the area. Yeah, but as our John Salazar shows us, not everyone is happy with the takeover by operation. All those in favor? Unanimously voted to take back Shelby Park. Talks continue to undo what Operation Lone Star has done. The Eagle Pass Border Coalition is going to file some Freedom of Information Act requests, and we're going to find out who authorized the concertina wire, who authorized the canisters. These canisters, the wire, is what America Garcia Graywall with the Eagle Pass Border Coalition is tackling next. This is just the first step. The way we're being represented in our own community by outsiders. After the Tuesday night showdown, she and other activists are now focused on all that remains of Governor Greg Abbott's $10 billion border security investment. How can we do this better? How can we be more effective? Because this is just the first step and you know, things have to change. Former Maverick County Commissioner Anastasia Wahab. There's no reason to have them. I mean, can you remember it's just a show? 
After Tuesday night's meeting, Mayor Rolando Salinas addressed why he unilaterally signed over the park to DPS. I made that decision because at that time, it was a situation I thought was uh, for the safety of the community. There's Salinas went on to say that his signature on this affidavit was intended to arrest migrants caught on park property, adding state troopers went rogue with the wire, canisters, and buoys, while at the same time, blocking public access to their park. Uh, DPS, ultimately, I think they're going to do what they want to do. So one thing is for us rescinding, and then we'll see what DPS does. I'm so proud to be here with the rest of my community. With the bottom line for the Eagle Pass natives is this. Operation Lone Star must change the way they currently operate. Get together and do something decent and humane to, to, uh, to uh, for the, all the people that are coming in. We can have border security without the cruelty, and that's what I want here in my hometown of Eagle Pass. And John joins us now from Eagle Pass with the latest. John, good morning to you. Uh, so tell us, has the DPS presence changed now that the uh, Shelby Park is back open to the public? No, the presence has not changed, but the park is now open. Uh, you know, we were the first to go down into the park yesterday to, to see if we could get in. And, you know, after slight resistance, they realized that the rules had changed. The council had uh, ruled unan unanimously to go ahead and, and take away that petition, which granted them uh, basically a blockade access to that park. Uh, their presence is still heavy. You can see the canisters that are still lined up there. On the other side is the Rio Grande in the operational headquarters of DPS is over in that parking lot where that public boat ramp is. So their boats are in the water. They're also getting assistance from the Florida Highway Patrol and we are waiting for the uh, Oklahoma State Police National Guard to show up uh, as uh, we had reported last week. And John, we're reporting that a body was found near those buoys in Eagle Pass. What can you tell us yeah. is the latest regarding that? Well, I'm hearing that there was a second body that were, was found in the same general location. Uh, that coming from Mexican media on the other side of that river in Piedras Negras. They also follow, follow what's happening here in Eagle Pass. They have a body count of asylum seekers and migrants found this year. Mexican media reporting that there have been 75 bodies in this area found um, and disclosed to DPS. Uh, and to o other local government officials, and we're trying to get that information uh, vetted out this morning, but it's DPS is here, National Guard is here, Border Patrol is doing their job, and uh, we will be here following the latest uh, in this fight locally. Yeah, John, no indication that Governor Abbott is going to remove those buoys. Is there any uh, more action from the Mexican government regarding those buoys being removed? The Mexican government is not happy with those buoys. And now that you raise the question, I talked to one of my local sources um, who said that he, he has insight into DPS, somebody that he talks to every day. There is some indication that perhaps those buoys could be moved from that location and moved further up the river, closer to private ranch land, where, ha where perhaps uh, it's out of public view, out of this you know, public green space, but we're trying to uh, find out that information and we also want to find out, you know, about those two bodies found by the buoys. Alex, Charles. Thank you. And before we head to break, we do want to thank you for spending your morning with Spectrum News One. Yeah, it is our privilege to offer unbiased reporting from communities all across Texas. And be sure to download the Spectrum News One app so that you can connect with us. We'll be right back. Stay connected to Spectrum News One with the Spectrum News app. Stream your trusted team live on the go or from home. And stay updated on the local news and weather forecasts that matter to you. Spectrum News, your community connection. Weather can be beautiful and at times powerful. Our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so at every 10 minutes, weather on the ones on Spectrum News One. At Spectrum, we know how much you depend on the reliability of our products and services. 
Now, we've taken a new step forward in reliability by identifying potential service issues before they become a problem. If you're affected, we'll contact you and help schedule a free service appointment with one of our expert technicians. The proactive maintenance of our network is one of the many reasons Spectrum delivers the most reliable internet speeds in the nation. Spectrum, keeping you connected. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. But they're perfect for me. Texas holds a very special place in both my heart and my family's heart as well. My dad started in the news business in 1955, so my dad was my idol. He was my mentor. I spent so much time in that world, I knew I just had to be a part of it. My life's purpose has been about informing, educating, and most importantly, connecting with people. It has been my passion to help people and make a difference in people's lives. I'm Brett Shipp, anchor Spectrum News One. Hey there, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ricky Cody. Great that you're great that you're here with us. He said heat warning once again in effect for all of the Dallas Fort Worth area outside of that heat advisories. And that is because we are not looking at any any relief over the course of the next several days, and it will likely be expanded, uh, extended rather into tomorrow. Now, to add insult to injury, we also have fire concerns. In fact, we have red flag warnings issued for Tarrant County, basically up and along the interstate and points out towards the west. This is due to the ongoing drought. We've got plenty of ground fuel, the lack of rain, all aiding in for wire, wild. Uh, aiding in wildfires to spread quickly and we'll have to keep an eye on that yet again today but we're not alone up and down i-35 even in parts of oklahoma is where we have the fire concern today high pressure that's the culprit maintains control of our forecast it's going to kind of meander across the state in the days to come by the time we get into about friday it's going to be back towards the west but we're still under its, under its influence meaning more triple digit heat right through the upcoming weekend that may bring us by the time we get to the second half of the weekend and into early next week to bring in a cold front, but I think it's pretty much going to stall out. It looks like right now along the Red River. It's not going to bring us a drop in temperatures, but it could bring us a little bit of rain and that may may drop us into the 90s by the middle part of next week. We'll have to see if that plays out. In the meantime, just more of the same 106 today. Excessive heat warning in effect. Again, a mostly sunny day wall to wall sunshine really overnight tonight. A warm, a muggy one dropping down to 83. Here's your extended 70 forecast. We'll go 106 on Friday. 107 on Saturday, 106 on Sunday, and then we may be able to bring a stray or spotty shower in with that front Monday and Tuesday, possibly into the upper 90s, but then back to 102 by Wednesday. Texas is cracking down on illegal street racing and street takeovers. Governor Greg Abbott signed two bills into law yesterday in Fort Worth with Mayor Maddie Parker. Both laws will help gate their cars and other items found. Fire crews say the Blum Fire in Hill County is now completely contained. It burned more than 300 acres after sparking last week. The Texas A&M Forest Service says fire departments from across the state have been released, but local crews will stay on scene to keep an eye on hot spots. Texans living in Wise County are back in their homes after evacuation orders were lifted for the Boone's Creek fire last night. That fire is now 70% contained and spans an estimated 80 acres. And the Arlington Police Department has arrested and identified three teenagers suspected in a car vandalism spree. They say these three are believed to have vandalized 17 cars over the weekend with racist and vulgar graffiti. Colleges have until January of next year to eliminate their uh, DEI offices. Earlier this year, Governor Abbott signed a bill shutting down all offices and stopping all training for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And just this week, the University of North Texas, because it became the first university in the state to announce they have dissolved their DEI office. 
And joining us now, we have Nook Turner, the executive director of Jump On It, a black-led organization based out of Austin. Nook, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank y'all for having me. It's my pleasure to be here this morning. Well, we're glad you're here. First, we want to have you talk to us about Jump On It, what it is, why it's so important to Texas, and really what your mission is all about. Well, first of all, the, the name Jump On It um, started, we started, our first programmer was in 1997. And that name came about because we wanted people to jump on the bandwagon of reclaiming our community. That was pre-gentrification here in Austin, Texas, how the city was getting ready to change. We wanted to use our historic parks and, and kind of keep a community together. And jump on is important to Texas, first of all, is we're in the capital city. And a lot of things that we do here in Austin can be a great example for what needs to be done in the state. But not only that, it's the, the problems and ailments that we see here in Austin as far as the urban community, black community, Hispanic communities, that's a statewide situation that's going on. And we look at, it, at expanding into other cities throughout Texas, but we feel that what we do here is important because people need to see the capital city actually make some, some strides in making sure that our black and brown communities become progressive. Yeah, it's, it's a powerful message that you're trying to get out into the public, but the way you're doing it is a one of celebration. Yeah. Uh, you know, talk about you condensed the programming uh, for people that don't know that have never been to any of the programming. Like, what kind of things are you doing around the city of Austin? And, and talk about a little bit of the celebration of the culture. Well, well, the whole thing is you don't go through gentrification if you value what you have. And a lot of times we don't, at just human nature, we don't value things until we've lost it. Mm -hmm. And so our idea of celebrating our culture and going with that is to celebrate it and value and appreciate who we are. Because once we start appreciating who we are, then that'll make sure that we start taking a stand for things that'll be beneficial to us. And so our programming, we always go into the auspices of entertainment mm -hmm. because we, we work and strive to reach the demographics that normally don't get reached, normally don't get the resources, normally don't get the, the aid. And so all of our programming are things that's fun and exciting to get them there. And then once we have them as a captive audience, we're able to inundate them with positive things, resources, education, mm -hmm. things that edify their life. And so we just have to understand if we start celebrating ourselves, we'll start valuing ourselves and we'll start coming together to unify to make it better for us. And Nick, we've got less than a minute. So real quickly, what do you have planned next for the future, maybe the rest of the year? After Jump On It Week um, ends, we're going to go knee deep into next year, working mm -hmm. on um, the programming for next year. And we're actually um, working on some things through city council um, for the city of Austin to rec rectify its mistreatment of its black residents. And that's going to be key because if Austin takes a stand, then we know that that'll spread throughout Texas. And our goal is to be the trailblazers to make sure that going into the next few years, Austin actually shows what it is for all of its residents, not just for certain demographics. All right, Nick, you are doing incredible work. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this morning. We appreciate thank it. Thank you all for having me. Thank you, and thank you all. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, DFW, it is now 818. Big delays over in Ron. Some delays are taking additional route. We have a crash reported right there at Horizon Road that's really putting, um, giving some heavy delays. Also on South Fort Worth, down, uh, downtown Fort Worth, on the northbound lanes of 35W, another crash reported at Seminary Drive. Let's look at your traffic. Stick around. We'll be right Sixteen teams, fifteen grand. One tournament to decide who knows the most about separating news fact from news fiction. That is correct, Jacob. The Spectrum News Challenge Tournament. That sounds really awesome, man. <laughs> if you think you know the news, then it's time to take the challenge. Spectrum News Challenge, Wednesday nights at 8.30. Available on all your favorite devices. Go get one line for yourself and a free line for your devoted friend. Friend? Friend. 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 Or you can get one line for yourself and one line for your kid. Sold. Or both lines for yourself. I use one for business and another for business. I do a lot of business. Get one line of unlimited for $29.99 and get a second line free for 12 months. Call Flick or visit a Spectrum store today. I don't remember how it started. 
Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. On the ground, sharing what's happening within their communities. It's my responsibility to know the issues here in Texas, but also, more importantly, to know who it affects. We want to make sure that you know what's going on in politics, in weather, and entertainment. You're going to get your local news. You're going to get storytelling about your local community. Your evening on Spectrum News One, weeknights starting at 5 p.m. Central. Violent crime this is on the rise. Mapping police violence reports, police across the U.S. killed at least 109 people during mental health and welfare checks last year. Now, more police departments across America are partnering with mental health professionals to reduce these numbers and get people in crisis the help they need. Spectrum News anchor and national mental health correspondent Dr. Nicole Cross has more in this week's Your Mental Health segment. People with untreated mental illness are involved in at least one in four fatal police shootings, according to a study conducted by the Treatment Advocacy Center. This year alone, three police officers in San Antonio shot and killed a woman who was experiencing a mental health crisis. In New York City, a man in the Bronx who struggled with mental illness was shot within 28 seconds of officer's arrival police officers shot and killed a man who was alone, unarmed, and having a mental health episode. Researchers say reducing deadly encounters between law enforcement and people with mental illness should be a top priority. It's one reason police departments across America are now turning to crisis counselors to respond to incidents where mental illness may be a factor. I recently went on a ride along with one such counselor to see what happens when they are dispatched to mental health crises. Take a look. My name is Liz Collins and I am a social worker. I've been at Integral Care for a little over a year now. I've been with EMCOT about five months of that time, I think now. Oh, we're getting a page. Hi, I've got a person for you to see over here. The deal is, she is bipolar, she's not taking her medications, uh, she allegedly had a recent suicide attempt, which was before her, this current arrest, which was on 7-6. If you know where central booking is, if you come down here, look for the counselor's office and I can take you up there if you don't know where it is. You know, jail's not a great place to be, especially in this kind of suicide precaution. We are going to central booking, which is where people go when they've been yeah, taken to, to jail, but they're not housed yet. Stay to the right as you go in, please. Okay. All right. Thank you. It was hard for me to come into, a, I think, a jail or a prison the first time. Okay. And that, you know, in jail or has, you know, handcuffs on is like a very different thing to see the humanity of, in front of you. We went in to speak with a woman who was going to be released into the community. The jail counselor asked to come out to do, do an assessment to see if they would be safe. I went in, I did an assessment, determined that they were not, you know, a risk of harm to themselves or others. 
you know, I've had my own struggles with mental health in my life, um, and I've had my own, um, you know, suicide attempts when I was a teenager. I think it just furthers my, like, compassion and empathy for our clients and everything that they're going through. Knowing my worst moment, what needs I had met, and then seeing on top of everything else that they have and just the resilience. Mobile crisis response teams are part of a Biden administration initiative to tackle the nation's mental health crisis. More partnerships between law enforcement and mental health agencies are forming across the country. If you or someone you know is in crisis, call, chat, or send a text to 988, the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. In the studio, I'm Dr. Nicole Cross looking out for your mental health. Former President Donald Trump is set to be back in court today for his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The judge in this case has also overseen several cases involving the January 6th riot. Today, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson will also be in court on security fraud charges. Paxson is accused of soliciting investors in a McKinney-based tech company back in 2011 without disclosing that the company was paying him to promote its stock. And approval of the Supreme Court is still at a record low. That's according to a recent poll from Gallup. Right now, approval of the nation's highest court stands at just 40%. We're going to have more Texas headlines and another check of your forecast coming up. Be sure to stick around. Spectrum News 1 will be right back in just a few minutes. Thriving community is an informed community, and being able to play a role in bringing people the news is something that I take very seriously. There's just so many things to love about the state of Texas. Southern hospitality, great food. I love that there are so many different cultures celebrated. I want people to turn us on in the morning and feel like they've got the information they need to go out and conquer their day. I'm Alex Stockwell, anchor for Spectrum News One. Special Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. So I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. Reliable. Absolutely. Special Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. Get one line for $29.99 and the second line is free. All with no taxes or hidden fees. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1-844-882-2999. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. We are connected, engaged from the moment we rise. We move just. We learn, explore, relax, and grow together. So we're ready to build a better tomorrow. Stay informed throughout your day with the Spectrum News app, exclusively for Spectrum customers. Weather on the Ones, every 10 minutes, also available on the Spectrum News app.
Good morning, Dallas-Fort Worth. I'm Lisa Hernandez, and this is your Spectrum News in 90. The Arlington Police Department has arrested and identified three teenagers suspected in a car vandalism spree. They say these three are believed to have vandalized with racist and vulgar graffiti. The Houston Chronicle reports Texas DPS is continuing to separate families at the border. They say fathers are being detained on trespassing charges while their children and wives are transferred to Border Patrol agents. There were nearly 30 men arrested last month. And Lionel Messi will be in Dallas this weekend. The Argentinian soccer player will take the field as Dallas FC faces Inter-Miami at Frisco's Toyota Stadium. Tickets for the Sunday match go on sale at 11 a.m. An excessive heat warning once again in effect for the Dallas-Fort Worth area today. Please continue to practice your heat safety precautions. Do not become complacent. It is hot out there. At lunchtime, we're at 98. We're off to the races and back to about 105 to 106 as we get into the afternoon. On top of that, we have concerns for once again fire danger. I'll show you that in your seven day coming up in a minute. Today, El Paso is honoring the victims of the tragic El Paso Walmart shooting. Yeah, it was the deadliest attack on Hispanic people in U.S. history. 23 people were killed and dozens more were hurt. We want to go now to our Luis Garcia, who is in El Paso. Luis, how is the community feeling four years after this horrific tragedy? Four years, four years had been passing that uh, shooting at the Walmart store. And I'm here at the temporary uh, memorial site that is just one block from the Walmart store. And this year, it feels different. It feels different because just a month ago, the shooter was sentenced to 90 life sentences. So that gives the, the, the community of El Paso a little bit of relief to this situation. The city of El Paso has planned some memorials. Also, the Border Network for Human Rights is going to be hosting a protest right here at Pounder Park. So we don't, as they say, so we don't forget that this shooting was caused by hate and political and white supremacist ideology. So this is what is going to happen today right here in El Paso that has started to heal from this shooting. All right, our Luis Garcia reporting from El Paso. Luis, thank you so much. Most triple digit heat is putting a strain on our power grid, but so far it stood up to the test. Here is a look at today's supply and demand forecast. And you can see right here, peak demand will come around 4 p.m. and it looks like conditions will be tight, but we will have enough energy to keep the AC running. And right now, several areas of Texas, Bastrop County, fire crews are fighting their second wildfire of the week. The Mesquite Field fire is now burning about 40 acres and is about 80% contained. It's located 30 miles south of the Powder Keg Pine Fire, which has burned more than 100 acres now and is 75% contained. And further east near Houston, at least two firefighters are recovering after being burned by the Snow Hill Fire in San Jacinto County. They had to be taken to the hospital. Let's go ahead and bring in our chief meteorologist, Ricky Cody. Uh, Ricky, good morning once again. So it looks like red flag warnings uh, are going to be in effect later on this afternoon for most parts of Texas. Yeah, so they were in effect yesterday. They were allowed to expire at 9 p.m. for most locations yesterday evening. They're back in effect as we get into the afternoon through 9 o'clock tonight. The reason for that. Well, of course, we haven't had any rain and the extenuating circumstances around fire danger continues today. So we have critical fire danger for all the areas here shaded in red. This is in effect until nine o'clock. Ingredients to support that, right? We've got lower humidity, relatively speaking. We've got plenty of ground fuel. The drought's been ongoing and we haven't had any significant rainfall. All of that, a really bad recipe for fires to spread. As of this morning, and this may change during the day today, but as of this morning, 164 counties across the state of Texas currently under burn bans. There's only 90 counties in our state that technically are not. And again, it just goes to show you where we continue to head with the ongoing heat and of course the, the expanding drought. Over the next seven days, our partners at the Weather Prediction Center, and this is pretty in line with our forecast too, not showing any significant rainfall for most of the state. Maybe some showers possible Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday of next week for places along the Red River. But even then, certainly nothing going to be drought busting. So we continue with this drier than normal weather. On top of that, the heat its not going anywhere. Heat advisories and excessive heat warnings once again posted. That's coming up. 
Today, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton will be in court on security fraud charges. Paxton is accused of soliciting investors in a McKinney-based tech company back in 2011 without disclosing that the company was paying him to promote its stock. And this comes just a few weeks before Paxton's impeachment trial is set to begin. Right now, the suspended attorney general is asking that all statements made to the investigative committee about his case be thrown out. Paxton argues that the witnesses were not under oath, violating state law. Paxton also filed a motion to dismiss nearly all charges against him earlier this week. The state of Texas is cracking down on street racing and street takeovers. Governor Greg Abbott signing two bills into law yesterday. One of the new laws may count the cars used in these crimes. Vehicles used in the commission of these crimes should be taken off the road immediately. For the people out there pushing around those 2,500 pound missiles, those chuckleheads, we want to make it perfectly clear that we're coming after you. The light will be on, on at the jailhouse and regardless of jail overcrowding, we'll always have room for them. The new rules will take effect in September. Nearly 50% of Texas counties are considered maternity care deserts, as according to a new report from the March of Dimes Prenatal Data Center. The report shows 15,000 babies were born in areas without a hospital or birthing centers last year. Well, it is time to start thinking about your fall vaccines. CBS and Walgreens are breast V vaccine, and they plan to offer the updated COVID vaccine once it gets FDA approval. And the birth control pill, Tidemi, is being recalled over possible reduced effectiveness. The affected pills were distributed between May 31st and June 3rd. All right, before we hit the break, we do want to thank you for spending your morning with Spectrum News 1. It is our privilege to offer unbiased reporting from communities all across Texas. And we want to hear from you, so make sure you download the Spectrum News 1 app and connect with us, leaving you with a nice look of the Riverwalk on this Thursday morning. Things look pretty cool in the shade. That's the place to be as we expect another scorcher here in Texas. Stick around. I am most satisfied when I'm making a difference. I get to go to work every day and communicate with fellow Texans who understand that quality of life matters and the choices we make matter. And if they can trust me to share important information with them, then I'm a happy camper. I'm Dr. Nicole Cross, anchor for Spectrum News One. From coast to coast, you've seen us around. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our commitment runs deep. We're invested here, creating good jobs and supporting small businesses, many of which we're proud to call customers. You count on us to keep you connected to what matters most. And we're com internet, TV, and mobile service. We're Spectrum, connecting the places we all call home. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 Weather can be beautiful, inconvenient, and at times, powerful. And it affects everything we do. At Spectrum News One, our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so you can better plan your day. And we do it every 10 minutes. We're the ones on Spectrum News One. And get your weather anytime on the Spectrum News app.
Hey there, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ricky Cody. Great that you're great that you're here with us here on Spectrum News One. We, of course, are still talking about the heat and excessive heat warning once again in effect for all of the Dallas Fort Worth area outside of that heat advisories. That is because we are not looking at any any relief over the course of the next several days and it will likely be expanded uh, extended rather into tomorrow. Now to add insult to injury, we also have fire concerns. In fact, we have red flag warnings issued for Tarrant County, all aiding and for wire wild uh, aiding in wildfires to spread quickly and we'll have to keep an eye on that yet again today, but we're not alone up and down I 35 even in parts of Oklahoma is where we have the fire concern today. High pressure. That's the culprit maintains control of our forecast. It's going to kind of meander across the state in the days to come. By the time we get into about Friday, it's going to be back towards the west, but we're still under its, under its influence, meaning more triple digit heat right through the upcoming weekend. That may bring us by the time we get to the second half of the weekend and into early next week, it may be far enough to the west to bring in a cold front, but I think it's pretty much going to stall out. It looks like right now along the Red River. It's not going to bring us a drop in temperatures, but it could bring us a little bit of rain and that may may drop us into the 90s by the middle part of next week. We'll have to see if that plays out in the meantime just more of the same 106 today excessive heat warning in effect again a mostly sunny day wall-to-wall -wall sunshine really overnight tonight a warm a muggy one dropping down to 83 106 on Friday 107 on Saturday 106 on Sunday and then we may be able to bring a stray or spotty shower in with that front Monday and Tuesday possibly into the upper 90s but then back to 102 by Wednesday Texas is cracking down on illegal street racing and street takeovers. Governor Greg Abbott signed two bills into law yesterday in Fort Worth with Mayor Maddie Parker. Both laws will help prosecute reckless drivers and confiscate their cars and other items found. Fire crews say the Blum fire in Hill County is now completely contained. It burned more than 300 acres after sparking last week. The Texas A&M Forest Service says fire departments from across the state have been released, but local crews will stay on scene to keep an eye on hot spots. Texans living in Wise County, our orders were lifted for the Boone's Creek fire last night. That fire is now 70% contained and spans an estimated 80 acres. And the Arlington Police Department has arrested and identified three teenagers suspected in a car vandalism spree. They say these three are believed to have vandalized 17 cars over the weekend with racist and vulgar graffiti. Today, former President Donald Trump is due in court to answer charges that he tried to overturn the 2020 election results. The former president faces four charges, including conspiracy to defraud the United States, something he is denying. But prosecutors say he was, quote, determined to remain in power and orchestrated a plot to overturn the election with six co-conspirators. Our Washington correspondent, Angie Gonzalez, she's got the latest from outside of the courthouse this morning. Angie, what's it like out there? Well, Alex and Charles, early this morning, well, I could say last night, people started lining up outside of the courthouse, trying to get one of those coveted seats inside the smaller courtroom, which today's proceedings will take place. They went in, some of them, a short time ago, even though this court hearing is not scheduled for several more hours. Trump is expected to be processed by law enforcement, be officially taken into custody and enter a not guilty plea in front of a judge on the following counts in the indictment against him. Conspiracy to defraud the United States, witness tampering, obstruction of and attempt to obstruct an official proceeding and conspiracy against rights of citizens. Despite Trump being physically here at the courthouse, it'll be up to him and ultimately Secret Service whether or not we see him at any point as cameras are not allowed inside the federal courthouse and he's an underground entrance, much like he did in Florida in the classified documents case. There is no shortage of people talking about this case. While many Republicans in Congress are coming to Trump's defense, there are others, including Trump's former Attorney General Bill Barr, that have a different take on today's hearing. I have come to believe that he uh, w knew well that he had lost the election. And uh, now, what, what I think is important is the government has assumed the burden of proving that. The government, in their indictment, takes the position that he had actual knowledge 
that he had lost the election and the election wasn't stolen through fraud. And Angie, as you mentioned, we're still several hours away from uh, Trump actually arriving. So what is the scene like out there? Well, as we mentioned, you know, there are a lot of people who are already around the courthouse. We've seen folks from Homeland Security. We've seen folks from Secret Service all here outside of the courthouse sort of stay calm. We haven't seen too many Trump supporters just yet. But as you mentioned, there are still several hours before this court hearing is scheduled to take place. And we do expect them to arrive here at some point. Angie, talk to us real quickly about security measures. Are they setting up any gates or perimeters around the courthouse area? Yeah, so if you'll remember around January 6th when this all took place, there were uh, very high security gates that were placed around uh, the Capitol building. Uh, there are security gates here, metal ones, but they are certainly not as high as those ones that we've seen erected near the Supreme Court, say, for example. Uh, they are about waist height, um, but we do know that there are law enforcement officials very visible around here that are also here to uh, present, you know, that they're not not going to take any chances with the former president's security and they're not going to be um, uh, willing to stand anybody who's going to disrupt the it's here today. All right, Angie Gonzalez reporting for us in Washington, D.C. Angie, thank you. All right, we have more Texas headlines and another check of your forecast coming up. Stick around. Spectrum News 1 continues after this short break. All right, thanks for waking up with us this morning, DFW. It is now 8.48. Let's take a look at your morning commute. If you are near the Rockwall area and traveling on I-30, listen up. We have a crash report on the westbound lanes right there at 30 at Horizon Road. It's causing some pretty heavy delays. Also, another accident on the eastbound lanes of 635 right at Plano Road. You can see that it's only open to two lanes right now. The strength of Texas is in its many voices and unique perspectives. Every Sunday, join host Carla Leal on In Focus Texas. Education, economy, immigration, and more. Balanced and respectful discussion of the serious matters impacting Texas from experts across the state. We take a closer look at the issues in your community. In Focus Texas, Sunday mornings at 9.30 on Spectrum News 1, available on all your favorite devices. So you're telling me this one-size-fits-all network upgrade is the best you guys can do? Better than that. It's the only thing we do. That's how we know it's right for you. Aye, aye, aye. Is that what I said? No, I think you were OK. Ah! I think that's a yes. We get it. Ask for the technology you need, and they call you unreasonable. We call you something else, our kind of client. So go ahead. Be unreasonable. What's on your mind? Take this time to talk and get it right. You know I'll be there all your life. When you need me, I'll be by your side. Little everyday conversations about the dangers of underage drinking can make a big difference in a child's life. Today at Zilker Park, where folks from across the state of Texas are coming together for this historic. At Spectrum News, we're committed to our communities around the clock, delivering stories that inspire and news that matters in your community. Our journalists are dedicated to bringing you trusted, balanced local news every day. And now, Spectrum Internet only customers, you can watch Spectrum News One on your TV, connecting you to your community 24 7. Spectrum News, now streaming exclusively for Spectrum. the world 
but the team that belongs to Texas. The franchise of legends, traditions, and success is also an organization intent on being the best once again. What is going to make this year the year? Daily coverage from Cowboys training camp continues right now. It is Dallas Cowboys as training camp continues. Dallas Cowboys as training camp continues today. This week, the boys ramping up intensity as they gear up for their first preseason matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars. That game is set for next Saturday. Let's go ahead and bring in Cowboys insider Bobby Bell from Odyssey's 105.3, the fan Dallas forward. Bobby, thank you so much for taking time this morning to be with us. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, let's get right to it. So, Cowboys, they had 90 guys out there looking for a roster spot. To you, who has been the standout so far? I, I mean, on both sides of the ball, it, it's probably not a huge surprise that you've got C.D. Lamb, uh, who, who's really stepped up this training camp and has been incredibly difficult for all the corners to cover. Um, he, I, I mean, he's really elevated his game uh, during this training camp run. And then on defense, and then probably the, the player of camp so far has been Micah Parsons. He's just tapped into a different level so far during this camp and completely unblockable. He, he had a rep the other day in the first pad of practice where he put Tyron Smith into Tyron in his entire career. Uh, so uh, that's kind of the, the big picture takeaway so far is that, you know, CeeDee Lamb, nobody can guard him out here. And with Micah Parsons, nobody can block him. And Bobby, we talk about Dak Prescott, unfortunately, leading the league last year when it comes to interceptions. Of course, looking to a new season, improvements that you're noticing from Dak. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, so I, Mike McCarthy's going to be calling the plays this year after they moved on from Kellen Moore, their offensive coordinator, for the last several years. Uh, they brought in Brian Schottenheimer, who uh, has familiarity with some of these West Coast offense concepts that they're trying to put in place. Uh, but, you know, they, they've said pretty consistently all about 30% of the offense will be different. And so I, I don't know that we've seen a ton different in terms of the concepts and the schemes, but we are, see, we are seeing a very involved Dak Prescott. CeeDee Lamb told us the other day on 105 Through the Fan that, uh, you know, he feels like this is the most in control of the offense that Dak has been uh, since he's been in Dallas. And so there's going to be a lot of power in Dallas, and he's really owning it out here on the practice field. You're going to be very vocal uh, with a number of the receivers and, and trying to really iron out some of those communication issues that led to the interceptions last year. Yeah, and Bobby, let's talk about the backfield a little bit. It's going to look a lot different this year with Zeke being released during the offseason. We know Tony Pollock to uh, be their number one, but tell us about some of the other guys that we might see come up. Yeah, I, I mean, you've got Rico Dowdle, who has been with the team now for a couple of years. They uh, signed him out of South Carolina a few years back as an undrafted free agent. That's a guy they really, really like. Somebody who can contribute on special teams, can contribute in the running game, is a, is a good pass protector. He just hasn't been healthy. He's gotten hurt every year that he's been here in Dallas. And so they're, they're really hoping he's healthy this year and he can contribute. Malik Davis is in his second year out of Florida. That's another guy that they liked a lot. Um, somebody that they have big plans for. And, and then the, the talk of, uh, I, I think, the Cowboys blogosphere, the guy that everybody's really excited about is Deuce Vaughn. Uh, he would be the shortest player in the NFL over the last 23 years, five foot five. Flip. Man, he is exciting when you watch him out there. He's gotten comparisons to Darren Sproul. So Pollard is obviously going to carry the load for them, um, but they, they've got some depth behind him that I think they're excited about. It's just all pretty much unproven. And so they're, they're going more off of their own internal scouting rather than anything they've been able to see on the football field at this point. Yeah, and Deuce Vaughn is a uh, home state guy from Central Texas area, so a lot of people from Texas looking forward to see him stand out. Bobby, the million-dollar question, what is this year going to look like for Dallas? Is this the year that we're going to finally see some postseason action from the boys? I mean, you hope so. Look, I mean, this has been a, a very productive football team in the regular season the last couple of years. They just they have not been able to, you know, carry things through to the end. Um, and, you know, they've had their postseason struggles, but those postseason struggles have gone on for a very long time. And, uh, you know, I, I think now what you're looking at is this is the year for a lot of, you know, make or break individuals, uh, specifically head coach Mike McCarthy. If you need somebody like San Francisco for a third year in a row, that's going to be trouble for them. Yeah, we know trouble has been following the Cowboys mm -hmm, for quite yeah. some time, but a lot of hopeful fans eager for this next season. Bobby Belt, thanks so much for taking the time to join us this morning. Enjoy Thank that you, California weather. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, talk Texas, and uh, you know Texas's favorite fast food chain has it fallen off? Is the question, and some redditors uh, seem to think so. Recently, a user posted the question: Has anyone noticed how absolutely trashy Waterburger Whoa. has become? That's what they put on the internet. It's on the it's on Whoa. the web. It's fighting of words. Of course, led to a flood of comments, and surprisingly, most of the users said. It has. Now the question is why, mm -hmm. and the ones, uh, to no one's surprise, many blame the fact that it's no longer a family-owned business after being sold to a Chicago-based investment firm in 2019. I, I, it's hard for me to sit with this trash talk about, we can't allow it. They are a Texas staple icon. Yeah, I mean, when, I you, th when you think of Texas, you, you, you think it tastes like Whataburger. That's so poetic, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. The decisions elected officials make really have an impact on all of us. A big part of what we do on Capitol is so that they're easily understood. We want to bring you a better understanding of local issues and the local impact of national issues with relevant in-depth conversations that provide context for Texans in a balanced and informative way. Capitol Tonight, weeknights at 7 on Spectrum News 1. They say the best things in life are free. That's why Spectrum Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. Hey, so I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. <laughs> Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months with no contracts. Call 1-844-537-2999, visit Spectrum.com slash get connected or Spectrum store today. It's the best deal in mobile. Free mobile sounds good. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Spectrum Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. OK, but what's the catch? Is it contracts? Get one line for $29.99, and the second line is free. All we know taxes or hidden fees. Whew. Man, I'm switching to Spectrum. You see it? Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1-844-537-2999. Get the best deal in mobile. Switch, Switch to